time, it can create bitter rivalries. He wants to throw chaos around. He wants to bring this upon himself. What just happened to Adam? If he wants to find out, then it's time for him to find out. It can generate obstacles. Was I just kidnapped and then threatened? I, or should I say Usha, wanted to warn you that fighting against us will do you no good in the end. And then when I beat Charlotte Yuri, those threats just kind of disappeared? So here's the deal. Fight forever, ladder match. You versus Alexis Nova. It builds us up. This is my chance to show that I can compete against the best. And now I go one on one with arguably the best women's wrestler alive today. Christine Rosario. I will give this everything I have and I will walk out with the network championship. It can be a powerful tool. I had to make a statement. Anything that tries to keep me away from Darius will get put away permanently. But I want you to know this, Jinku. You're not ready. You're never going to be ready. It is ever present. You and me, locked inside a steel cage. We're gonna walk into that cage, beat you within an inch of your life, and then show you what everyone already knows. You can't beat me. It can lead to major moments. We're about to put on match of the year. No, the greatest tag team match in CEW history. And I'm going to repay Zozo by winning the CEW World Tag Team Championships with him. And although we think there's an end. That fight forever, I take the only thing in the world that you have anymore. I was willing to treat you like any other woman in the back, but now... You're an enemy. We will always fight forever. So I guess you'll want to know, what am I going to be bringing at Fight Forever? I don't know. So I want my match at Fight Forever to be two of the best, healthy, ready to go. And now, the CEW Network presents... Fight Forever. Ladies and gentlemen, it is finally time. Welcome to Fight Forever and welcome to the five-year anniversary show of CEW. And it couldn't be a celebration of CEW's history and it couldn't be a celebration of five years without the CEO himself, Byron Poland. And now this man was announced to be opening the show not sure what he's gonna say here i think it is probably just gonna be a case of uh you know him conducting business as he usually does but again this is a man who brought cw on to youtube this is the man who took this company and brought it onto a platform and for five years this man has been running this company this man has fought for this company now we will be hearing from the CEO right here, right now, to kick off Fight Forever. Philadelphia, let me hear you. Welcome to Fight Forever and welcome to our five year anniversary show. That never gets less weird to say. It's crazy to think that I was just a young adult with a dream of making a company better than it was when I bought this company. And since then, you know, we've had our ups, our downs, the good times, the bad, but I, for one, wouldn't change a damn thing. For five years, CW has been a place where if you want to wrestle, you will wrestle. But it's not just giving jobs to wrestlers. We wouldn't have shows if it weren't for the tech crew, 
the ring crew, the sound crew, the countless crews and individuals who put the stages together, who make sure you can hear me right now, we couldn't do half of what we do without them. And of course, none of us would be here if it weren't for all of you. The people who come in in droves, fill up arenas, and for those watching on YouTube, without you, there would be no CEW. So before we get on with the fantastic card that we have tonight, full of matches of high drama, high action, and high stakes, let me thank everyone who is here watching and everyone who is here competing. Oh, of course. You know what? As much as I say that there can't be a five-year anniversary without our CEO, did we really think there was going to be a five-year anniversary show without this man showing up in some capacity? Uh, Blake Payne here right now, and honestly, you know... I, I thought nothing could ruin my mood tonight for a five-year anniversary, but here he is proving that you can very much ruin the mood very, very quickly. I have just one thing to say to the crews, to the people watching, and to you, Byron. You're welcome. You're all welcome. Because if it wasn't for me, there'd be no CEW right now. Tell him, Byron. See, he doesn't want the world to know that when he bought the company back three years ago, he handpicked me as his top guy and, well, wasn't that the best call you've made? Do you mind? This isn't the Blake Payne celebration. This is CEW's celebration. You are a part of what has made CEW so special, but you are not the only one around here that is special. We have guys like Stanley Owens, Max McCarthy, Mayu Shigata, Tony Taylor, The Rock and Rave Experience, Marzo, everyone who is competing tonight. Okay, but how many of those can truly compare to what I can do? How many of them can sell out the Tokyo Dome like I did? And don't get me started on those guys you had me monitor in the academy. There are a handful of promising talents, and they'll happily throw that all away to kiss your ass. Case in point, Jason Campos. He could have been something big, but he's had two matches and then got relegated to being your backstage enforcer. But he won't ever say he's unhappy. No one will, because they're worried that you'll fly off the handlebars. Come on, man. Oh, wait a second. Asking you shall receive. Here comes Jason Campos. Something tells me he has something to say right here. Blake, for the love of God, shut up. Let me clear this up. Would I like to wrestle more? Sure. Am I fine with keeping the peace? Yes. Not all of us have to be the guy. That's your problem. Fight forever. The five year anniversary, yet, yeah. where is Blake Payne? Your ego can't handle the fact that this company doesn't have to rely on you. Who the hell do you think you are to tell me that I'm not needed for a pay per view? You've never been where I've been. You've never been the top guy. You're just someone who thought they were a big fish in a small pond. But as soon as you left, you realized there are much bigger fishes out there. I could wrestle circles around you. You mean Jacob could beat me for you? What did you just say? 
Are you deaf? You wouldn't have been world's champion without Jacob Campbell. Braxton had your number despite all the cheap tactics you threw at him. So you had to resort to getting Jacob to win for you. I could beat you within an inch of your life and you'd get Jacob to stop me at that one inch. When are you going to start proving that you're the best wrestler in the world? Look, pal, when you're at my level, you don't have to prove anything. But if you want to scrap, well, I'm not in any sort of attire to wrestle, so how about I do what you keep saying I do? Jacob! Oh dear god, wait a second! Wait, where is Jacob? Where, where, where is he at? What did you do to Jacob? Me? I genuinely didn't do anything. Trent, on the other hand... Oh wait, what the hell? Oh my god! Trent X just taking the fight to Jacob here! Neither one of these men was scheduled to be here tonight, but they're here anyway. Alright, calm it down. Look, we have a pay-per-view to run through. So I ask that Trent, you get away from Jacob, and you two, you leave now before I have to suspend the both of you. So let's, uh, what on earth? Oh my god, Jordy. I was going to say, let's start a fight forever with some normality. But of course, this man can't do anything normally. As we have ourselves a very high stakes matchup to start off this show. As Jordi Diaz takes on Bradley British. And if Bradley loses here tonight, he is banned from CEW. Jordi will make sure of it. And of course he's coming out to the sound of the police. Because of course he is. Because it's Jordi Diaz. And this man walks around like he is the pro wrestling prodigy. And honestly... Jordy is looking fired up here tonight. I mean, we saw what he did to Vic Swagger. And if that's anything to go by, Bradley could be looking at a very tough task here. But at the same time, I feel like Jordy is scared of Bradley. And that's why he threw so many hurdles at Bradley. But the question is... Can Jordy send who he deems to be a problem packing? I, I don't know. But anyways, as always, there will most likely be a poll in the premiere chat. Let me know who you think is going to win. Will it be Jordy or will it be this man right here? The pride of Britain himself. Bradley British. Now this man, like I said, he has gone through hurdle after hurdle. He won a six-man tag. He won a 3v1 gauntlet. And now he is looking to get some revenge against Jordi Diaz for everything that Jordi has done since the Norwich Street fight. And we, we still don't know fully why Jordi even decided to meddle in the affairs because this man never reveals anything, you know? He, he didn't reveal why he stopped working with Braxton. He's not revealed, you know, why he's seemingly working with Adam Adams. He's not been revealing a lot. And honestly, Bradley is looking fired up as always. And I think Jordy might be, uh, might be about to find out that it is worth keeping your mouth shut and not meddling in affairs that don't concern you because Bradley is like I said he is a fired up and when this man looks fired up that is when you know you have a problem so here we go opening contest of the show here we go the bell is rung and now well, look at this And oh, of course, Jordy getting out of there. 
Jordy wants nothing to do with Brad. Oh, oh, look at this. Look at this. Jordy just trying to find some way of getting back into the ring. But Bradley stalking this man. Oh, and Alan Ace flipped him off. Jordy in the ring. There's the gun. Oh, a chop to the chest. And oh, the bell clap. You don't turn your back on Bradley. Especially when you've done everything you've done to him. When you're Jordy Diaz. Oh, but now look at this. What's Jordy looking for? Oh. Oh, the snake eyes. Now look at this. Oh, he's just flexing. He, why? Why is Jordy doing this? That's my real question. Oh, went for the stomp. Bradley shot to the gut. And now look at this. All oh, the shots just being thrown here by Bradley. Look at those gut punches. A little, you know, perhaps just firing shots here on Jordy because we all know that this started when Bradley stabbed Adam Adams. That's when that happened, when all of this started. And now, oh my God, look at this big forearm. Oh my God, and Bradley just tries to knock Jordy out. And look at this. As calm as they come in Bradley, but Jordy bringing it back and out. Look at that. Oh, wait, went for the chop. Gets caught, kicked to the gut, though. And now, look at this. Bradley sending Jordy in the corner. There's a chop. Oh, but the other one blocked by Jordy. And now the Hurricane Rana coming in. Now, look at this. Jordy just stomping away, trying to wear down Bradley. This is the smart play here. Now look at this, he's getting fired up in the corner. He's yelling something. I have no idea what Jordy's saying, but he's definitely yelling something at Bradley. And now look at this, oh my god. The, the, oh, he slapped him. He slapped him in the face. Oh, went for the super kick. And now, oh wait, hang on, Bradley looking for a heart punch to Jordy and he flips him off. These two literally cannot stand each other. And that's why I thought we're not really going to see much of a wrestling match here. We are just going to see two men. Two men? Two men scrapping away. I've been talking to Bradley British too much. That's why I almost said two men's fighting, you know. Oh my god. Big knee there from Jordy Diaz. That's right now. Wait, oh, oh Jordy with a jawbreaker. Now what's he looking for? Oh, right, look at this. Trying to wear down Bradley. Honestly, a smart strategy if you're Jordy. Wear down the big man because Bradley is the bigger man in this fight. Oh, wait, now Jordy. Oh, oh, slamming him head first into the mat. Going into the cover now. One. Only a one, though. As right now, it does seem to be that Jordy has been in control. But when that momentum shifts, it feels like Bradley is doing more damage. Now, oh, wait, hang on. Jordy like he's going for something else. Gets caught with the dragon screw, though, from Bradley. And now, look at this. Bradley going to work on the arms of Jordy. Into the splash. But doesn't go for the cover. He still wants to do more damage in this matchup. And now, what on earth? he looking to do oh like he's trying to send him out of the ring Jordy wants nothing to do with that Jordy's best bet is to keep this in the ring that is probably the player now oh, wait hang on look at this from Jordy oh nice back suplex not done though German now look at this from Jordy showing off a little bit of his a uh, little bit of technique here into the suplex the trifecta here into the cover, but Bradley's foot under the ropes there. Oh, now Jordy showing off. But he's allowing Bradley to get back up to his feet. He's taunting to the referee. And oh, big shot to the gut. And now he's looking for another heart punch. There it is. Oh, and now Bradley. Look at this. Showing off his raw strength with the deadlift. And, oh, brings him back down to reality. Oh, wait, hold on. Bradley's not done. Look at this. He's doing it again. Look at the strength for this man. 
once again. Is he going to go for it one more time? Oh no, Jordy getting back up to his feet. He wants nothing to do with that, but gets caught with the power bomb from Bradley. And Bradley British is officially in control of this matchup. Oh my god! The strength for this man! Going into the splash as well. Now look at this all stomping away. Stomping away on Jordy, and now what is Bradley looking to do? I have no idea. Oh, nice little shoulder tackle action there from both men. Oh, but wait. Oh my god! Jordy just got his head taken off. But I feel, yeah, no, his foot was under the ropes there. But my god. Bradley just going in, and now what's he looking for? Oh, that brain buster going into the cover now. One. Two, Jordy able to kick out. Oh, double axe handle trying to wear him down. And now Bradley could be looking for that knee strike out of the corner. Could be looking for it to put this match up away. Oh, but Jordy able to sidestep. No, wait, hang on. Jordy, Jordy with a roll up. One, two, oh, only a one. Only a one. I thought there was a two there, but it's only a one count. And now Jordy lifts up Bradley looking for it. The dude buster. One, two, Bradley able to pop the shoulders up. Oh, but now look at this. Jordy looking for the end. Looking for that driver. He's taunting to the crowd. This is the chance to put Bradley away. Oh, but Bradley. Bradley with a sidestep it. And now look at this. Combination from Bradley British. Now look at this. Firing the gun. Jordy getting out of there. Bro needs a breather, it seems. He's trying to figure out what he can do, but oh no. Oh, the double axe handle again. And now look at this. Looking for the knee. Oh, Jordy sidesteps. And now Jordy with a drop kick. And now all oh, this could be it. Jordy Diaz looking for the end. Bradley counters with a knee. Spear on the outside. Big time elbow drop as well. And Bradley has now got Jordi Diaz right where he wants him. And once again, look at the strength for this man. Deadlift Gorilla Press. And Jordi Diaz is very much struggling here. Thrown back into the ring. And Bradley once again looking for that knee. Looking to put Jordy away with this one. He hits it. And I think he might have just busted open Jordy. Two. But Jordy kicks out. Jordy Diaz able to kick out. But the damage might have been done at this point. And Jordy is in a position where he'd rather not be in it. Oh, whoa, wait, hang on, Jordy. Oh, he knew, he knew that Bradley was looking for that end to end. He cannot get caught in that. And now, oh, wait, hang on, Jordy with the strength here. Oh, my God. Kick to the back. Now, oh, wait, hang on, Jordy. Oh, big time leg drop going into the cover now. One. Two. Oh, Bradley able to kick out there. Now, oh, wait, Jordy went for something. Bradley said, no, I went, went for the shot to the gut. Gets caught in the knee. And oh, super kick on the part of Jordy Diaz. Now, wait, what is Jordy looking to do? Oh, wait, catches him one more time. Give me a look and put it away. Dude buster from Jordy. One, two. No! Jordy just can't put the match up away, but he's looking for the end one more time, but Bradley has it scouted. Big time clothesline. Now Bradley, what is he looking to do? I feel like he only has one option right now. Has Jordy in the corner, there's a shot. Flips him off, and now, Bradley looking to put this match up away. Has Jordy right where he wants him. And this might genuinely be the most dangerous move. The most vicious move 
in all of CEW because I don't think anyone's kicked out of it yet. End to end from Bradley and that, my friends, could very well be all she wrote for Bradley. Hang on a minute. Bradley doesn't look like he's done. It very much looks like he's not done here. Oh my god, wait a second. Wait, wait. Bradley. Jordy tried getting out of the corner, but Bradley's got him in there again. Bradley has him in position one more time. He says a little prayer. Ends to ends again. The crowd are chanting one more time. But Jordy is out and Bradley sees it. Two. Bradley British gets the win. And he can finally move past Jordi Diaz. And he can finally look to gain way. He can look to go where he should have gone after the Norwich Street fight. But my god, what a matchup. Jordi almost getting the win on a couple occasions. But in the end, Bradley British knew exactly what he needed to do to put this matchup away. And Bradley finally gets some justice on Jordi Diaz. And this is going to be a very sweet, sweet moment here for Bradley as he has the money in his hand. And he finally gets to do this to Jordi Diaz. Puts the money in the mouth. Well, from a matchup to where if someone lost, they were banned. To a match where if Sienna gets the win, she can choose the time and the place to finish the gauntlet. It is match number two in the Controlatav gauntlet. And as you can see by the hardware around the ring, we have ourselves a ladder match. And Sienna already showing off her climbing abilities here tonight. And she will be taking on the woman described as Controlatav's assassin in Alexis Nova. But can Sienna get it done? You know, Sienna's biggest moment winning the Women's Academy Championship happened in a ladder match. But can Lightning strike twice? And more importantly, does Sienna even want this win with what she'll have to do afterwards? I, I don't know. But now making her way down to the ring representing Controlatav. It is Alexis Nova, and like I said, this woman considered the assassin. The person that Usha sends in when nobody else will do. And Alexis Nova is looking fired up here tonight. But the question is, can she get it done? We know Alexis Nova's style very high flying but it's also very high impact so a match like a ladder match is going to be very very uh very upper alley i would argue and this is a very precarious matchup if you're sienna paying here tonight but i think there is no fear in sienna at this point she's in too deep to feel fear but I don't know, I feel like Nova might have a trick or two up her sleeve. I don't know. But we are going to find out right now as we have ourselves a ladder match. as the second match at Fight Forever. My throat is going to be dead after this. I'm going to tell you that right now. No, wait, hang on, wait, Sienna. Sienna getting caught. Oh, hook, line, and sinker right there. 
Now look at this, Alexis Nova immediately taking the fight to Sienna. And now, oh wait, hang on, hang on. Oh, a running power bomb on the outside. I mean, here's the thing. I didn't expect this to be. Uh, I didn't expect this to be a match. I think these first two matches don't expect them to be technical classics or masterpieces. These are purely about two people with a lot of disdain for each other fighting it out. Oh, went for the super kick. Oh no, and there's a chop block. And that is going to be wise on the part of Alexis Nova to wear down the legs of Sienna throughout this matchup. And now look at this from Nova once again. Looking for a power bomb onto Sienna. And now look at this. Nova grabbing the first ladder in this matchup. And looking to use it to full effect here. Looking to set it up. Oh, but wait. Hang on. Sienna back in the ring. Big shot. Oh, went for a shot. Couldn't get it, though. And, oh, big kick on the part of Alexis Nova, who is now climbing that ladder and perhaps is looking to unhook that, that contract. But Sienna back up to her feet, and now these two scrapping on the ladder. Sienna missed a shot right now. Oh, hit it this time. And Alexis off of her feet. And Sienna looking to unhook the briefcase with the contract. But Nova back up to her feet, hitting those shots. And now, oh wait, hang on. Going off the ladder, perhaps they're gonna do more damage here to Sienna. Throwing her off the ladder, kick to the back. Now once again, it looks like Alexis Nova going to work on the leg once again. And this is a, a you know, as, as much as people don't like to admit it, with the likes of Controller Tav, this is a very well thought out strategy on the part of Alexis Nova. Wear down Sienna's legs, try and go after the back, after the spine, and it's going to make climbing an absolute challenge for Sienna Payne here tonight. Big chop on the ladder. And now, wait, look at this. Nova oh, went for the senton, but the knees were up. And now, oh wait, hang on, the Sunset Flip Bomb. And Sienna now looking perhaps to get something going here in this matchup. Sending Nova into the ladder. And oh, missed the drop kick. Not what she wanted there, but a big chop. Able to recover. And now, oh wait, hang on, Sienna. Look at this. We're going to bring in the second ladder around the ring. Bringing it in. Now, wait, hang on. Oh. Now, Nova, look at that drop kick. Oh, but she lands on the ladder as well. But this might give Alexis Nova the opportunity she needs to set up this ladder. Sienna just kind of biding her time, realizing that if Nova has the ladder in her hands, that is not good. Oh, my God. Now, wait, wait, look at this kick to the back. Now, what is Nova looking to do? Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, wait. Went for something. Chop block from Sienna. And the style that Sienna is presenting here, a lot different than her usual style. She isn't flying all over the place. She isn't bringing that high-flying style that we're so used to. She is bringing aggression. She is bringing... Just basically... She's bringing a harder hitting style than we usually see. And that's good. That's adapting your style for what's to come. And these two are looking to fight on top of that ladder once again. Oh wait, hang on, oh wait. Oh, head first into the ladder. Now Sienna looking once again to send her off the ladder. Oh wait, Sienna, Sienna. Oh, went for the splash, but the knees were up. Oh, that's going to do damage, and there's a forearm. And Alexis Nova now looking to unhook the briefcase and get that contract and essentially save Usha the hassle. Oh, well, something went on down there. I have no idea, but Sienna, look at this. Throwing shots. Oh, now look at this. 
Nova off the off the briefcase, but now Sienna. Power bomb to Alexis Nova. Oh! And Sienna tried climbing there, but did one of her legs buckle? Did one of her legs give in? I I, I have no idea, but now what on earth? Is Alexis Nova looking for here? Perhaps he's thinking that maybe a springboard. But then realizing just going in with uh, with the strikes is gonna do Oh! But Sienna now pushes her off, brings herself back down, realizing Nova is gonna be an issue. And now, what is Sienna looking for? I have no idea. Oh! The arm drag into the drop kick and Sienna here. And defied the, oh my god, Sienna out here defying the logics of physics here. And look, I know Controlatov are a spooky group, but that doesn't explain why spooky things are happening whilst they're here. Oh, throwing Nova into the ladder. And now what is Sienna looking to do? Oh wait, hang on, Sienna now. With another ladder, but not. Oh, wait. She's setting it up. It's a ladder bridge. Ladder bridge brought in. But no, oh, look at this. Alexis Nova. Oh, with the kick right to the skull. And Nova could be looking to utilize this bridge. Oh, big shot there from Sienna, though. Oh, super kick. And now Sienna could be in control here, could be looking to put this away. What? Oh wait, hang on. Just rests her on the ladder. And now Sienna could be looking to put this matchup away. Could be looking to just unhook the contract. Which honestly, oh, and Nova pushes the ladder away. So it is now down to the core strength of Sienna. And she falls down. Now, once again, Nova just going to work on the leg. Lots of psychology being used in this ladder match. Oh, wait, super kick. And now the corkscrew shooting star. And this is what I mean by this is going to be just very hard hitting. As right now, Sienna sent back into... Oh, that ladder, and there's another chop. And now, wait, looking for this. Senton finally hits it. And now, Nova. Oh, wait, hang on. Oh, my God. Sent spine first on that ladder. And now, Nova could be looking to put this matchup away. Oh, went for the moonsault. But Sienna got out of the way on that one. And that is going to hurt. Alexis Nova here in this matchup. As now, oh wait, hang on, Sienna. Look at this. Oh wait, Nova realizing. Big shot there to Sienna. Went for another one, realizing. Oh wait, both of these two realizing. Oh wait, hang on. Oh my god! Head first into that ladder. But Nova is still fighting. How is she doing this? Telling Sienna to bring it. And bring it is what she will do here. Oh, now thrown to the outside. Nova perhaps realizing that it is no longer about doing damage to Sienna. It is about unhooking that briefcase and saving Usha. What Controlatar believed to be the hassle of fighting Sienna. But Sienna is still here. She's still alive in this fight. And the chops are for all oh, the chops were flying. Big kick. Oh, and she sends. Oh, wait, Nova. Nova not done. Oh, my God. The sent on from the top of the ladder. And I have to agree with the crowd here. This is awesome. Oh, my God. But Nova not done. Looking for it again. Oh, and that was a mistake. That was a mistake on the part of Alexis Nova. And now look at this. Oh, big kick to the gut. Shining wizard from Sienna. Now, oh, wait, hang on. What is what, what, what is Sienna looking to do here? I, I have no idea. Setting this ladder up in a precarious spot. Perhaps he's trying to 
Get it out of the way. I don't know. Oh, went for the super kick. And now Nova. Oh, wait. Oh, big time exploder. Now look at this. Nova with ladder in hand. Oh, well, went to use it. But Sienna. Oh, setting it up. And now these two. They know what they've got to do. They're climbing once again. Oh, big shot there from Alexis Nova. Oh, no, wait, hang on. Wait, no, 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 don't do this, Nova. Oh, my God, the superplex to the outside. And Alexis Nova might have just won herself the matchup right there and then. And she is looking to unhook the prize. But Sienna, look at this, Sienna stirring. Sienna back up to her feet. Oh, but wait, now look at, look at this, Sienna. How does she still have the fight left in her to do this? I went for the chop. But both of these women have gone through hell in this ladder match. Oh, and Nova's down. Oh wait, Sienna, with the elbow, right from the top of the ladder. And now, oh wait, what on earth is Sienna looking to do? Sienna throwing Alexis Nova onto that ladder, Sienna. Moonsault through the ladder. And that might have just put the nail in the coffin for Alexis Nova. But Sienna just making sure. Serotonin driver. And now look at this. Sienna making the slow climb. The adrenaline wearing off. The fatigue setting in. But Sienna unhooks the briefcase. And Sienna now controls her own destiny. She can choose the time, the place, the stipulation to fight the final fight in the Controlatov gauntlet against the unbeatable Usha Falls. And my God, Sienna might have just proved in this matchup that if you were doubting her before, she might have the secret to defeating Usha. I will keep it real as we move on with the show. Big win for Sienna. Wait a second. What? What is Nitro Oxide doing out here? I mean, the last time we saw him, he made it to the final two in the Vader Memorial Battle Royal and then... He tried helping Zorox retain against Kanishi at a live event, but we haven't seen this man. And he, he's not scheduled. It's a pay-per-view, my guy. What are you doing out here, Nitro? As you all saw, my proudest moment ended in heartache. I know we only had one tag match together and all, what you didn't get to see were the times where we would wait in catering, just hoping and praying we'd see our names on the sheet for Explosion or even Mayhem. We were going to be a great team and who knows, we could have been World Tag Team Champions someday. But Kanishi took that away from me, dropped me on my skull and threw our friendship away. I'm, I'm stupid for even coming out here on a stage like Fight Forever, but God damn it! I'm gonna get that championship back tonight. Kanishi, get out here right now. Oh, now hold on a minute. Nitro with a little bit of aggression here, calling out the all day champion to seemingly an impromptu bout here tonight. Well, hey, it looks like Kanishi doesn't mind. And 
as Kenishi looks to uh, potentially remove Nitro Oxide from the equation. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. This man is dangerous. We've seen this. He attacked Al Davis, and Al Davis is in the ring right now, mind you. He is our referee for this event, and he viciously assaulted this man with a baseball bat. You know, he dropped Nitro on his skull just to win this championship. He fought Zorox in a street fight just to get this belt back. I don't think there's anything that Kanishi won't do in this, well, in this situation. And I don't think there's anything that this man won't do in the world to keep that championship with him. As Kanishi looks to cement his legacy as one of the guys associated. And one of those guys that you associate with the All Day Championship. He wants you to look at that championship and think of this man right here on the camera. Kanishi Hikaru. And well, hey, it looks like we're having ourselves an All Day Championship match in prompt two. So tell me, who do you think's gonna win in the premier chat? As, oh, look at this, these two going in and all oh, the kick once again. The kick that started this all is the kick that is about to start the momentum of Kanishi in this matchup. And strangely, this one isn't fool's count anywhere. I mean, oh my god. Oh my god, the running powerbomb on the outside. I mean, it is still no rules essentially it is still just these two are able to batter the hell out of each other and kanishi is doing exactly that to nitro oxide oh big time double axe handle right to the skull oh and he hits one once again and now it's oh it's a guri from nitro now look at this going to work on the leg oh my god on the steel as well it's now nitro oxide realizing the situation he's in realizing that he has to win this matchup in the ring but kanishi could really just beat this man down to a bloody pulp and then leave that's what he could do now wait, look at this, Nitro feeding off the energy of the crowd. And he's going for the dive. Oh, and he just undershoots. He just undershoots. Oh, went for the shot. big forearm. From Nitro Oxide, uh, from Kanishi, sorry. I am, I'm a bit frazzled. I didn't have the notes on this. No one told me this was happening. Now look at this, Nitro looking for the dive again. And he gets it this time. Now, oh, he's picking up the chair. He's, oh, he's going in. Getting a little bit of justice. Getting a little bit of revenge here with this steel chair. Oh, but Kenichi back up to his feet. And now he's going to use the steel chair to his advantage. And there's a neck breaker. Into the knee drop. And now look at this. Turn around. Kenishi, what is he looking to do here? Oh my god, wait, electric chair driver! Just plants this man on his skull on the outside. Kenishi bringing it into the ring. And now what is he looking to do? Oh, wait, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh my god! Just kick that man straight in his skull. I, I I said it. I said it when he made his entrance, and I I, I didn't think he was going to go that crazy. But Kanishi proven tonight that he will do anything to walk out with that championship as we are going to move on with the show.
Well, after that impromptu bout, we now begin the championship section of the night. And we are kicking off the championship bouts with a tag team championship match. As making their way down to the ring first, it is the challengers, the team of Peter Marlowe and Zozo. It is Marzo. And this team have absolutely climbed the ranks here. And Zozo coming in has helped Peter Marlowe grow as a wrestler. I mean, we've heard it from Marlowe himself. We've seen it within the like places like REW. And this is Marlowe's first chance to, as he says, repay Zozo for everything. And he's hoping to do that by becoming the CW World Tag Team Champions alongside Zozo. I mean, right now, when you look at the statistics, they are, you know, Marzo and the Rockaway Experience, they are currently one apiece. Marlo was able to beat David Creed. Ricardo Gino was able to beat Zozo. But in a tag team match, the dynamic is so much different. And it's going to be interesting to see which one of these teams walks out of here with the tag team championships. As we now await the arrival of the champions. Hold on a minute. This isn't their usual music. I was going to uh, point out a very big statistic, but these guys are bringing out some interesting gear here. As making their way down to the ring, the longest reigning CW World Tag Team Champions in history. And the only team to hold these championships for over a calendar year, it is the Rock and Rave Experience, Ricardo Gino and David Creed. What a team these two are. What a journey they've been through. Very similar to Marzo in the sense of when they come together, my God, do they bring the best out in each other. And it has been, it, it, it shows, it's been proven. These guys started off as a tag team that I think a lot of people overlooked when they first came into CEW. And now look at them. They've won Tag Team of the Year two years in a row. They've been the World Tag Team Champions for over a year. These guys are the epitome of, well, basically just working your damnedest until you make it. And these guys... You cannot deny the Rock and Rave experience are the definition of we have made it. But can Marzo be the ones to end this year plus reign that the Rock and Rave experience have been on? That is the question on everyone's minds. As the World Tag Team Championships on the line here tonight. Fun little factoid. The Rock and Rave Experience, last time we had a Fight Forever show, they were fighting for the tag titles of the Challengers in the opening contest. And I, I believe it was that match that put them on the map when they tried to take the belts off of greatness. And now we are looking at a team who is ready to show the world what they're capable of. But you also have Marzo who know what they're capable of, who have won tag team championships multiple times together. But tonight, it is time to see, can Peter Marlowe and Zozo become the CEW World Tag Team Champions? We get a little taunt off to start here. Oh, and now look at this nice collar and elbow. David Creed and Zozo starting this matchup off. And oh, went for the kick. Oh, went for the forearm. And these two with the counters and the taunts. Oh, went for the kick again. And these two just going for it again, but they know the counters here. We're just seeing a, a goal. There's the forearm. But we were seeing counter after counter in the early stages there. Now look at this, Zozo. Look at this, trying to bring the fight. Neither man with the clear advantage yet. Oh, oh nice takedown. Nice hip toss, light maneuver there on the part of Zozo. Who now looks to send 
David Creed into the corner. Tag made into Marlowe. And now look at this. Ooh. Combination coming in on the part of Marzo here. Look at that big stomp coming in. Oh, but look at this from David Creed. Oh, wait. Will Barrow. Bulldog coming in on Marlowe. And neither team has the advantage just yet. Big knee to the gut. Oh, went for the rolling forearm. Couldn't get it. And now a weight kick to the gut there. Oh, and now Marlo looking for this. Oh, the DDT. The tilt -a world DDT. But David Creed in the ropes. And these two teams. It feels as though these two teams are going to go 100 miles an hour in this matchup. Big time in Zaguri. And now look at this from Marlo. Looking for it. The sliding German suplex. But now look at this. Marlo not done. Realizing he wanted to go over to that side. But realizing that Gino is there. And Gino might try and stop this. Oh, wait. Oh, went for the 450. Might have gotten a bit greedy in the early stages here. And now look at this. David Creed. Little shades of what happened at the, the Trigger Street fight. One. Two. Oh, only a one. One. Two. Oh. One. Oh. Oh, wait. Hang on. One. Oh, my God. These two with the roll-ups. And oh, wait. Look at this. Gino still in the ring. Oh, oh, but there's the distraction. And now look at this from David Creed. Into the split. There's a big shot to the head. And it's going to be very interesting to see what the team dynamic for both the Rock and Rave experience and Marzo is going to be in this matchup. Oh, nice snap there there. And now look at this. Oh, wait. Rock and Rave experience with the same tag move. And now look at this. Zozo, oh wait, Zozo, oh my god, with the senton, the seated senton, and here's the thing, you know what, it's within the rules, both of these teams are going to do whatever it takes to walk out with the tag tops, this is a high stakes matchup, you know, Marzo, here's the thing, they haven't been pinned or submitted as a tag team in the Rock and Rave experience, well, they haven't been pinned or submitted as a team, they haven't lost as a team in... I believe over a whole year at this point. So now look at this. David Creed lines up the shot. And there's a boot right to the chest. And these two teams, like I said, they are going to throw everything that they have at each other. Big into Guri. Now look at this. Oh wait, David Creed could be thinking the dive here. David Creed, what's he looking to do? Oh! Wait, hang on. He, he, think, he thought about it, but now he's up on the top rope. Oh my god, what a drop kick. Taking this man off his feet, and now look at this. Oh wait, Zozo. Oh, with the double axe handle. Calling David Creed's bluff, and things are getting crazy here in this matchup. So now, wait, look at this. Marlo going up top. Creed realizing it. But oh, oh, went for the double axe handle. Creed saw it coming. And now, wait, look at this. Off the ropes. Flatliner from David Creed. Marlo trying to figure out where he is. Trying to get his surroundings. Big shot to the gut there from Marlo. Into the forearm. Into that rolling forearm. And right now, neither team has really had the advantage in the early stages here. Now oh, look at this. These two just taunting away at each other. Big shot. Oh, countered by Marlo. Oh, countered by Creed. These two with the counters here. Kick to the back. Now oh, wait, hang on. Marlo looking for that DDT one more time. And that could be the turning point here. If you're Marlo and Zozo here in this matchup. Tag made, and now what are these two looking to do? Off the ropes. And on oh, the double shoulder tackle. And Zozo now not letting up. Big time drop kick. And oh, looking for the standing moon salt, and he gets it. Standing moon salt from Zozo. Now look at this. Creed getting isolated here in this matchup. Looking for another standing moon salt. David Creed gets out of the way. 
And now what's he looking for? Oh my, look at the strength of Creed with the gut buster. Going into the cover now, one, two. Oh, not a two. I don't think there was a two there. I got a little overzealous. But now the shot's still being thrown. These two teams going all in to try and get this win. And now look at this, looking for a rolling splash. Zozo now showing a little bit of aggression, you know. Here's the thing. These two teams have a ton of respect for each other. But when those tag team titles are on the line, you have to throw everything you have at your opponent and more to get the win. And now look at this from Creed stomping away on Zozo. Now look at this, Creed looking to tag into Gino. Which, in my opinion, is the right thing to do here. Try and catch your breath. And now look at this. Oh my god, look at this. The swift combinations coming in on the part of Creed and Gino. Oh, and now look at this. Elbowing away here. Look at this. Going to work on the knee of Zozo. And honestly, that is the smart strategy on the part of Ricardo Gino. The Rock and Rave experience have clearly gone into this with a game plan. Went for the Inzaguri. But now Zozo, what's he looking for? Oh, wait, hang on. Maybe a little code red. What? Oh, not even a one. But it's reversed. One, two. Oh, but reversed again. One, two. Oh. And that's a little shades of uh, what we saw in their match. Now one on one match, now look at this, Marlo not enjoying the taunts, not wanting to taunt, he's wanting to fight right now, and look at this, from Marlo, the Death Valley driver, going into the cover now, one, two, but a kick out from Ricardo Gino. And now what, a, what is Marlo looking for in the corner? Oh, look at that. Shoulder tackles. And I'll oh, wait. The alley oop bomb into the cover. One. Oh, not even a one. Gino got that shoulder up quickly. Now, look at that. Pushes away Marlo. And now. Oh, running chop block. And that was smart there. That was well placed and well timed on the part of Ricardo Gino. Now look at this, sending Marlo into the corner, tag made into David Creed, the frequent tags here from both teams, as both teams again, you know, they've been up and down the, the globe, you know, these two, these two teams have been everywhere, DDT, they've been everywhere together, and therefore, you're looking at two of the best Synergy teams in all of CEW. And now David Creed, what's he looking to do? Oh, oh, a Superman punch. Oh, Superman punch. One, two. Oh, couldn't get it done though. Zozo having all the confidence in the world. In Marlo. Oh, went for the elbow. And that could be Marlo's moment to get something going here. Big knee right to the skull. Now look at this. Going to work on the arm of David Creed. Creed has taken a lot of the punishment in this matchup. For the Rock and Rave experience. Now look at this. Off the ropes. Oh. Look at that arm drag. That kick to the gut. Here's the thing, I said the Rock and Wave experience had a game plan. I think it'd be wrong to say that Marzo don't here. Because it's very obvious that they have something planned as oh my god, wait, what on earth is Marlo doing? Just launch Zozo into Creed. Oh, and there's a flip. A flip Senton style. And a moonsault springboard. Oh, but now look at that. Gino might have just stopped the momentum, but the referee saying you can't get involved, man. Big Inzaguri from Zozo, isolating Creed. 
This could be bad. Oh, but wait. Creed with the crucifix. One. Oh, only a one. But as you saw, I think you just caught it on camera. The boot of Marlo. He was in the ring. He knew that Zozo might have needed him in that moment. Big shot to the skull there. Oh, but big shot there from Zozo. Now Zozo once again looking to isolate David Creed. And this seems to be Marzo's strategy for this matchup. The pop-up runner. And now what is Zozo looking to do? Sending David Creed into the corner. There's a big drop kick. And now, oh wait, hang on, Zozo running the ropes. Running the ropes again. He's 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 bound, he's he, he's doing something. And now look at this on the top. 450, but the knees were up. Oh my god, the disco boot! Into the cover now. One, two. Zozo just kicks out though. Now David Creed needs to fight his way out of the corner here. Oh, now look at this. He's doing that by just going absolutely in on Zozo right now. Oh, now look at that. Marlo trying to make the hot tag. Oh, but Marlo might have just helped Zozo out here. Zozo going into the roll-up with the referee. Distracted Marlo trying to get into the ring here. Oh, and David Creed saved by Gino. And now look at this. Gino coming in, combination to Zozo. Oh, and there's a neck snap as well. The synergy on display by the Rock and Rave experience and by Marzo here. It's an absolute, it's absolutely fantastic to see here in this matchup. And now oh, the drop kick to the back. And Zozo trying to make that slow crawl. But he is so far away from his corner. Oh, but now look at this. Zozo caught in the powerbomb position. Oh, but the runner. The Frankensteiner. One, two. Oh, Creed able to kick out. But now what is Zozo looking to do? He's looking for something here. I'm not sure. He's got Creed up on the top rope. Now what's he looking to do? Oh, big shot. Throws him off. Into the flip senton. Now, wait, look at this. Gino's there. Oh, but the leg drop. Leg drop from Zozo. I think Gino is just pressuring Zozo into moving quickly. Two broken up by Gino. Look like Gino might have been going after Marlo for a second there, but realized he might be needed in a second. Big time suplex from Creed. And now look at that tag made into Gino as Zozo trying to get up to his feet. Gets pulled the arm drag though. And oh, the running chop block. And Gino is cleaning house right now. Now look at this old big shot there from Zozo pushed away. Into Guri pushed away. And Zozo going crazy. DDT to Gino. Now look at this. Oh wait, hang on. Zozo. Oh, with the 450. Springboard 450. Oh, but Gino in the ropes. Gino made it to the ropes. And now. Into the corner. Oh, but the back buckles there of Gino. Now look at this. Big shots coming in on the part of Zozo. And now look at this. Pendulum backbreaker. And oh wait, look at this. It's David Creed. Oh, but Zozo. 450. Finally connects with the 450. Going into the cover. One. Two. No. Gino able to kick out. Gino still alive in this one. We have had quite a long matchup, but there's still no telling of who's going to walk out with the tag titles. The suplex stunner into the cover. One, two. Ah, oh, Zozo just kicks out. And Creed might have just dealt with Marlo. And now look at this. 
this could all be over for Zozo here. Looking for the spine on the point, but the elbow to the skull. And now look at this, the pop-up runner from Zozo. Now look at this. Zozo trying to go after David Creed here, but Creed said no to all of that. Now Creed, oh! Zozo duped him. And now, super kick to Gino. Oh, but Creed back up to his feet. Creed sees what's happening here. Into the corner goes Ricardo Gino as Marzo are finding their feet here. They are going to go for something here. The double. The double team offense. And now, oh, wait. Marlo lining up the shot. Looking for it. Knee. Reality check. New champion surely won. Broken up by Creed. Oh man, but now look at that. Kick to the gut. Disco boot from Creed. He's wiped out both with the disco boot. Zozo's on the outside. Gino's up to his feet. He picks up Marlo. Spine on the pine. One, two. Marlo kicks out. The fight is still on. As the Rock and Rave experience almost won the matchup right there. But Marlo is still fighting. He's he told himself that he is gonna help, he's gonna repay Zozo for everything he has done by winning the tag titles with him. And by God, that is what Marlo is gonna do. Sending him into the corner. Realizing that Zozo's not there. He got taken out with the disco boot. He is still trying to find himself on the outside. And now standing moonsault as Zozo gets back up to his feet. Oh! What a knee there from David Creed. And now look at this. Marlo with a drop kick. Might have just taken Creed out of the equation. Shining wizard. And now, look at this. Marlo sending him into the corner. Big shot. And now, tag made into Zozo. And this could be it. Lifts him up for the power bump. Elbow drop combination. To win the tag team championships, the referee. Come on. One, two. Gino kicks out. But Zozo not done. Zozo looking to put this match up away. He's looking for it. Got him caught. Hoverboard lock. Locked in. And this could be it for the Rock and Rave experience. Marlo. Oh, trying to get Creed out of the equation. And Creed accidentally just took Al Davis out. And that just bought Gino some time. And now look at this. David Creed. DDT to Zozo. And Marlo. Marlo getting took it off the apron into Gurry from Creed. Oh, and the pop up runner from Zozo. This match is going everywhere. Oh my god, what a need from Creed. And now Gino. What's he looking to do? Looking. Oh, wait. Off the ropes. Oh, went for something. Zozo. Oh my god, Zozo out here duping him every single time. Now look at this, all big chops. Chops flying in. And now what on earth is Gino looking for? Sends him into the corner. Drop kick. Sending Marlo off the apron. Big shot. There's another one. And now tag made. What are these two looking to do? Oh, double back elbow. And now David Creed. Oh, like he might have been going for the disco boot there. Oh, instead, no, he hits the punch. He hits the Superman punch. And now, perhaps trying to send him into the corner here. Oh, what about big shot? Now look at this, Creed sends him into the corner. This could be all she wrote. Zozo could be in trouble here. 
constantly hit with shots sent into the corner. Slumped in there. Creed now just trying to wear down Zozo. Habs looking for something specific here. I don't know. Now look at this. Creed just finding something here. He's going crazy right now. Big slam. Now look at this. Marlowe saying something there. Look at that. Bringing himself into the ring. Is he going to take the bullet here? Oh my god. He just took the bullet for Zozo. Might have just bought Zozo some time there. Rolls out. And the runner again. My god, what a matchup this has been. Oh, but now look at this. Three sending him off the top. He knows how dangerous Zozo can be on that top rope. And now David Creed. Oh my god, the disco boot. Tag made into Gino. Now look at this, Gino could be looking for the end here. Big kick, look at the shots flying in. And now the back breaker. They know that they need to throw everything that they have at Zozo to put this man down. And now well, what on earth? Off the top with the arm drag, oh my God. Into the cover now, one, two, no. But now look at this, Marlo stirring on the outside. Wait, but keep your eyes on Gino. Gino with the dive. Gino with the dive. And now, oh wait, on the outside, on the outside, the suplex stunner. Zozo, oh no, Zozo crashes and burns. Zozo crashes and burns. Oh, but wait, hang on, Zozo. Tilt a world runners. The tilt a world runners coming in. Oh, but now look at this. Gino throwing Zozo back in. Marlo looks completely out of it, but Zozo is still alive in this one. And look at this. Listo kick. Into the cover. One, two, broken up by Creed. And this is where the numbers are going to play in right now. Backbreaker, but Marlo on the apron again. And this could be it for the Rock and Rave experience. Oh, no, wait. Oh, look at this now. Combination on the part of Ricardo. Gino. Now, look at this. Gino. Oh, wait. Oh, Marlo trying to make a hot tag. Everybody's down. Zozo trying to get back up to his feet. Spine on the pine. One, two, the rock and rave experience. Retain the tag team championships. Oh my god, I need water after that one. Oh my god. What a match we just witnessed. These two teams threw everything that they had at each other. But in the end, the year plus reign continues. And the Rock and Rave experience once again proving why they are the World Tag Team Champions. But take nothing away from Marzo. They just took Creed and Gino to their absolute limits in what could be the greatest tag match in CEW history as we move on with the show. Well, this show so far has just been literally insane. But we are going to move on as we have ourselves a CEW Network Championship matchup. As, uh, let me just sort out the audio real quick. That's right, sometimes, you know what, sometimes commentators need to sort out our audio. But making our way down to the ring, it is the challenger. And it is quite simply 
Jessica Smith. Now here's the thing. I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people are counting Jessica out right now. And honestly, when you think about who she's up against, some people might think that that's, that's fair. But to me, I feel like you are underlooking and underappreciating what Jessica Smith has done to get this opportunity. You know, she has beaten person after person, has climbed her way back up to a championship match, and tonight she is looking to call herself Network Champion. But the thing is, is that she has to deal with someone who, if I'm right, is on defense seven of the Network Championship in the form of Christine Rosario. And the reason why I keep highlighting the amount of times that Christine has defended this is, if I'm right, I believe Christine Rosario holds the record for the most amount of defenses of a women's championship in CEW history, which uh, it is kind of crazy to think about. But when you're someone like Christine Rosario, you are the kind of person who can wrestle week in and week out with that championship. And I don't think fatigue is a thing that's in the vocabulary or even in the mindset of Christine Rosario. That's, that's the thing. But of course, you know, it's not just Christine Rosario competing tonight representing the violent regime. Of course, later on tonight on the show, her, uh, her faction mate, Tony Taylor, will be competing for the Women's World Championship. And so far for this unholy alliance between Control Atav and the Violent Regime, it is not looking good because obviously we saw it earlier on in the night. Uh, Sienna Payne defeating Alexis Nova. So Christine Rosario, perhaps this alliance, there's more pressure on Christine to get this matchup done and to walk away with the win now more than ever. Here's the thing, Jessica Smith looking fired up. You know, we heard it. We heard it. Jessica Smith, she's ready and she's proven that. Oh, now look at this. Oh, wait, look at this. Out of the gate. Jessica in with the combination into the clothesline. Already taking the fight to the network champion. Paling down shots. Kick to the gut. And Jessica Smith with the very early advantage. But here's the thing. I don't know if what she's about to do is the wisest thing. And that is sending Christine to the outside. We know that Christine Rosario specializes in hardcore and so when you take her outside you're essentially bringing her into her own world and now look at this Christine Rosario smelling blood in the water already in this matchup Three. let's now look at this all into the apron and now drops the knee Christine of course the, the way I describe Christine is she plays a very, very strong, but often quite methodical pace. Big shot there from Christine. And then, oh my, oh wait, oh my god. Oh my. I mean, hey, I say methodical, and then sometimes she'll just headbutt someone three times, because why not? Now look at this, throwing Jessica back into the ring. Kick to the gut. And obviously, you know, Christine might want to might have wanted to do more damage on the outside. But this is not a fool's count anywhere. This is not an ODQ match. This has rules. It's only pinfall or submission. One. Only a one so far in this matchup. Oh, went for the stomp. Jessica able to counter though. And now old back elbow. Oh, look at that big kick. Another back elbow. A back elbow again. Just going in with the shots. Oh, but Christine pushes her away. And now, oh, look at this. These two countering. Kick to the gut. And now, oh, there's the takedown into the punches here from Christine Rosario. And now, oh, wait, hold on. Oh, Christine might have been going for that Kamagoye. But Jessica has that well scouted. And honestly, it's going to be the scouting and the watching of the tapes that is going to be 
the biggest aid to Jessica in this matchup. It's now, look at this. Oh my god! An elevated, inverted DDT. And that's the kind of thing that Jessica needs to be bringing in this matchup. She just needs to be bringing aggression. She just needs to be on Christine because, you know, she takes her eye off the ball for a moment and Christine Rosario will capitalize as Jessica's looking to wear her down. Not sure how wise this is on the part of Jessica Smith, but only time will tell as the knee connects there on the part of Christine Rosario, who now locks in an abdominal stretch on Jessica, trying to wear down the challenger here. As Jessica looks like she's kind of struggling here. Oh, but now look at that. Finds her way free. And now, oh wait, hang on, Jessica. Ripcord knee going into the cover now. One. Oh, only a one. Jessica can't believe it either. And now look at this. Jessica trying to keep the offense going. Big knee right to the skull there. And this is what Jessica Smith needs to do. She needs to keep the pressure up on Christine. Or else, you know, her hopes and dreams of becoming network champion are just going to be simply that one. Oh, oh, still only a one. Still only a one in this matchup. As right now, Jessica, what's she looking for? Oh, gets countered with a punch. Now, what is Christine Rosario looking for? The God Buster. And now thinking the elbow. Oh, no, Jessica gets out of the way. And now, oh, wait, Jessica. What's she looking for? An abdominal stretch of her own here. Abdominal stretch of her own onto Christine. Trying to wear down the champion now. Oh, but now look at that. Christine with the same counter. And now, oh no. Got her in her sights. Kamagoye. One, two. Jessica kicks out though. But here's the thing with Christine. Those kinds of moves. Even moves that she doesn't classify as her big moves. They can put somebody away. But look at this from Jessica. Oh wait. Catches her into the roll up. One, two, oh, almost winning the belt there. Almost winning the championship. Oh, now look at that. She was daring Jessica to do it, but Jessica fumbled. And now here come the headbutts. And now what on earth? Oh, wait, look at that. Christine going in with those shots into the clothesline. Discus clothesline. And drops the knee on the skull. Oh, big kick right to the head there. And now Jessica with the clothesline. And now Jessica Smith looking to take things up top. What's she looking to do? Oh, she misses the knee drop. Misses the knee. And now, oh, there's the lariat. One, two, kick out from Jessica. And Christine probably wasn't expecting that. Was probably looking to put this matchup away already. And speaking of putting this matchup away already. Looking for the signal jammer. Oh no, but Jessica has that scouted. Jessica has it well scouted. And now look at this. The combination coming in. Ushi Garoshi. You love to see it. It's been a while. It's been a while. But you love to see it. And drops the knee. Here's the thing, Jessica knows she needs to tap in to everything that she has to take out Christine. And you've got to think of, oh my god, double super kick. Going into the cover now, one, two, no. Unable to put away the network champion, but as I was saying, you've got to think about the caliber of talent that Christine Rosario has faced in her network championship journey. She has taken on one-on-one -on -one matches, fatal five ways. She's defended that thing on REW. She's defended it on EPW. Jessica is trying to prove that she can be the one to defeat Christine.
But the question is, what can be done? Oh, this could be done. The flatliner. One, two. Christine kicks out. And this is the thing. It doesn't matter how much resiliency you have. You have to try and wear down Christine. And that doesn't happen often. You have to be able to basically have more resiliency than Christine. Because look at this. Already back up to her feet. And now Jessica, look at this, going in with the combination once again. Hits the clothesline. And now it went, went for the shot. Christine said no. And now what on earth is Christine looking to do? Perhaps thinking a little, uh, oh, the slingshot into the ropes. And that is going to win Jessica, which is not good when you're up against someone like Christine. Who is now just going to work on the hamstring. And now what on earth? What on earth is Christine looking for now? Look at this off the ropes. The knee to the stone. Going for the cover now. One. Two. Oh, hold on a minute. Christine saw the foot on the rope. And here's the thing. You might not like Christine, but a lot of the time she does not want to win with any sort of asterisks. If she's going to do this, she's going to do this clean. Oh, my God. But that might have cost her here. This might have cost her. Oh, no, it might not have, actually. And now, look at this. These two trading shots right now. Big time back elbows coming in from Jessica. The back elbows just keep coming. Oh, and the clothesline over the top. Now, look at this. Jessica calling Christine up to her feet. Jessica looking to take a run up. Dive to the outside. And Jessica is absolutely taking the fight to the champion right now. Look at this. Combination on Christine. Jessica Smith proving to the world that she is in fact ready. Oh no, but there's the jawbreaker. Oh, and the lariat to the outside. Lariat on the outside. And Christine. Oh, wait, hang on. She doesn't want to win by count out. No, she wants to do more damage. Christine. Oh! Uncharacteristic slip up from the network champion. Is she rattled here? Has Jessica somehow broken this calm demeanor? Oh, no, 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 no. What on earth is Christine looking for? Oh, my God. On the steel. But Jessica, look at this. Already getting back up to her feet. But Christine doesn't realize her back's turned. Jessica in the ring. Big shot. Oh, but she misses the other one. But now look at this. Combination coming in. Snap suplex going into the cover now. One, two, no. Now look at this, Jessica, oh wait, hang on, this could be over, Jessica with the Koji Clutch, Jessica Smith with the Koji Clutch, and could this be, oh lord, I'm dying here, my throat is not taking fight from over here, but here's the thing, Jessica Smith could walk out with the win right now with that Koji Clutch, locked in, nowhere for Christine to go, she has to break out of this, or she will lose the network championship because there is genuinely no way for her to get to the ropes here. Oh, and Christine finds the way free. She finds the way free, and now look at this big kick to the skull. And now look at this, the power bomb coming in. Now, what on earth is Christine Rosario looking to do now? Sending Jessica up to the top. Oh, no, wait, gets caught. Jessica with the clothesline. Now, look at this. Could be looking to put the nail in the coffin. Ripcord knee into the cover. One, 
two. No. I need to take a drink because goddamn my throat is dying here. Into the corner. And now wait, tree of woe. Jessica could be looking for something big here. Backstabber from the tree of woe. Now up top, this could be Jessica's moment. Calling Christine up to her feet. Oh, went for the drop kick. Couldn't get it though. And now she's sent into the corner. Now what on earth is Christine Rosario looking for? The long dart. Into the corner. And now, oh no, Camer Goye. That has to be it. One, two. Jessica kicks out though. Christine clearly not happy about this. Oh, look at that big kick. And now look at the combination. There's a knee. Oh, but Jessica back up to her feet. Just telling Christine to bring it. Jessica still up to her feet. Oh, my God. The shoulder tackle. And look at this. Jessica refusing to stay down. But the sit-out power bomb. One, two. Jessica kicks out again. Now look at this, the shot's being thrown. Oh wait, kick to the gut. And now oh wait, drop toe hold. Jessica in control once again, the deadlift, back suplex. And now look at this, Jessica Smith up on the top and she drops the knee. One, two, Christine kicks out. Christine Rosario still able to kick out the resiliency of both of these women is absolutely insane and they are being tested to their absolute limits here as Christine Rosario with a back elbow. Lifted up and now oh no, Jessica caught signal jammer. Oh wait but hang on, Christine not done. This is what I mean by the calm demeanor. It seems to have snapped here against Jessica. There's a second. Oh my God, she's not done. Jessica, if you thought one was bad, if you thought two was bad, here's three. One, two, Christine Rosario retains the Network Championship. And again, as I stated, this calm, composed demeanor that we have seen from Christine Rosario in recent defenses, it seems to be cracking. We are seeing a more vicious, a more dangerous, and just a downright more determined Christine Rosario than we have seen in quite some time. And quite frankly, that is a very scary thing. Jessica gave her absolute all in this matchup. She took Christine to her absolute limit. She locked in that Koji clutch. But in the end, Christine Rosario, I believe, marks defense number seven in her network championship reign. And while, hey, Christine looking to continue to cement her legacy as network champion as we move on with the show. Well, we now continue with the show as we have ourselves a steel cage match for the Women's Intercontinental Championship. Making our way down to the ring, it is the former champion, it is Eliza Stone, and we have seen it. Since she lost the championship, she has been determined to get it back 
And well, hey, it looks like she might have just put the champion into a corner by challenging her to a steel cage match. However, as you see there, you know, following the attack from Elizabeth onto Eliza, Eliza is sporting some, uh, some shoulder tape here, which uh, kind of tells the story of what exactly... What exactly is kind of happening with Eliza Stone at this moment? But the question is, is her shoulder going to be good enough for a matchup quite like this? Because making her way down to the ring, it is the women's intercontinental champion herself. It is Elizabeth Payne, and here's the thing. This is technically her first defense, because... She was meant to defend it against Trish Renee, and we saw how that went. You know, money talks and all of that, but... God damn, you know, I I always expected Elizabeth to always be kind of sneaky and to try and find some way around getting more defenses, but to just blatantly pay somebody to not only forfeit a match, but then to also... Get their, their teammates to attack some people and then to get them to fight Eliza Stone. I mean, am I really surprised at this point? I don't think so. But honestly, I do genuinely believe that Eliza Stone has put the champion into a situation that she doesn't want to be in. But perhaps she wants us all to think that. I, I don't know. You never know with the Pain Foundation. This is the thing I feel like I say a lot. You never know what's going on with the Pain Foundation. You never know what's going through the mind of someone like Elizabeth Payne. You you just don't. So here's the thing, you know, like like uh, Eliza mentioned, you know, with this steel cage, there is going to be no interference. You know, no Blake, no Alex, no Madison. No one's going to be there to help to, to help Elizabeth. She's going to have to do it all on her own here. And I feel like that is where Eliza is going to shine here tonight. It's going to be interesting to see who gets it done here in this matchup. Steel Cage. And already, look at this. Elizabeth looking to leave already. But look at this. Eliza. Smashing her leg into the cage and just says, nah, you are not winning that easily. And here's the thing. This this is uh, very, very reflective on their attitudes towards this matchup as Eliza just missed a knee drop there. And now, oh, wait. Oh, oh. nice uh, fisherman suplex. Oh, went for the double stomp. And, oh, clothesline into the corner there from Eliza Stone. And, oh, that knee right into the jaw. Going into the cover. Not even a one. And now, look at this, Eliza. Here's the thing. The, the cage, we've seen it. The cage brings out something in Eliza Stone. And, honestly, I'm not sure... If the champion is quite prepared for this, is look at this. An arm bar already. Oh, but look at this. Oh, wait, hang on. Elizabeth able to break free. Here come the shots. The shots coming in. And... Oh, a pump kick. Now into the corner. Big monkey flip there. And now, once again, Elizabeth looking to leave. I mean, here's the thing, you know. It's kind of interesting to see, you know, because a lot of the times in steel cage matches, especially in C on CEW soil, you'll find that people don't like to leave the cage. People want to win by pinfall or submission within that cage. But Elizabeth is taking one of the rules and using it to full effect here. And now look at this, these two fighting on the top rope here, and oh no, Eliza, oh, she falls. 
Oh, I don't know what Elizabeth was thinking there, but oh, oh, went for an elbow. Overshot there. And that's now going to allow Eliza Stone to get something going here. Big forearm went for another one, got pushed away. And now, oh, that oh, was nice takedown. And once again, Eliza Stone, look at this, just trying to break the guard, hitting a couple forearms. And again, it's that contrast in styles that is going to make this matchup so interesting. It's the idea that Eliza really, really wanted this steel cage match. And she is at home inside this steel cage. But Elizabeth is trying to just win by any means necessary. Oh my god, what a kick. And now look at this. Drop kick to the back. Now Elizabeth thinks that, that could be it to retain the belt. One. Oh, only a one. Now look at that. Trying to get the crowd fired up. I don't know why the crowd would be fired up when it's when it's Elizabeth conducting, but I, I don't know. Oh wait, turn around. Oh, went for the chop block. Big boot to the face there. And now look at this. Elizabeth once again trying to leave, it seems. We're going to climb the cage, looking to escape with her championship. But Eliza Stone, not going to let that happen. Look at this. Elizabeth thought about it for a second. She is trying to escape, but look at this. Oh. Eliza, look at... Oh, once again. Elizabeth just refusing to let Eliza knock her off the cage. And now, wait, hang on, oh my god, what the hell, oh my! Big time elbow drop, and now look at this. Elizabeth once again in control, there's the drop kick. I'm starting to think that this is all a strategy. I'm starting to think that this is all a ploy that is working to full effect here for the champion. Misses the Inzaguri, and now Eliza Stone with the DDT. And now look at this, Eliza going up to the top rope. What's she looking to do? Oh, misses the elbow. And now, oh wait. Oh wait, hold on a minute. Elizabeth with a submission hold. Very rare do we see that, but look at that. It's going after the shoulders. It's going after the arms and the head here. So a very smart strategy. We've seen this before when it comes to Elizabeth. But now look at this. Eliza fighting her way free. Now look at this. Oh, big forearm. Big kick. And now Elizabeth in that corner. Oh, but big elbow. Big forearm, if you would. And now I'll wait. Elizabeth with the double stomp. And another one. Just going to work on the ribs now. Oh, big knockout kick. And now once again, Elizabeth looking to escape the cage. I'm genuinely starting to think that there's some sort of bigger strategy here on the part of Elizabeth. I don't think she wants to leave. I think every time she goes up there, she is trying to sucker Eliza in. Oh, but wait, hang on a minute. She is actually looking to escape there for a second. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, look. Here come the boots. Oh! And Eliza falls. And Elizabeth once again looking to escape. But Eliza not going to let that happen. Shot coming in. Now, look at that. There's another shot. Now, look at this. Eliza dragging Elizabeth off the top of the cage. Now, what is Eliza looking to do? Perhaps to finally takes her off the cage. Now, Eliza Stone, what's she looking to do? Well, she decides to bring it back into the ring. I say bring it back into the ring. You know what I mean. Not stand on the top rope. Put your feet back on the mat. And now, look at this. Eliza Stone in control right now. Look at the shots flying in. Now going to work on the arm as well. 
Eliza Stone. What's she looking for? Oh, look at that. Air Raid. Neck breaker. And this could be it. One. Two. No. Eliza almost got her championship back. But now this could all be over. She could be looking for that cross face chicken wing to put this matchup away. Oh, no. Back elbow. And oh, wait. Hang on. Turn around. And I'll oh, wait. Elizabeth. Oh, plants are on the map. Into the cover now. One, two, no. And Elizabeth almost retained the championship there. And could be looking to put this matchup away. Could be looking. Four. Oh, wait, back elbow. And now look at that. The takedown into the roll up. Two. Oh, wait, reverse. One. Oh. Oh, big forearm, and here's the thing, again, with the referee not in the ring, it's going to be harder to see, you know, it, it's going to be harder for both Eliza and Elizabeth to really kind of know when that free count is coming, that, that's the thing, and now look at this, into the armbar here, from Eliza Stone, this has been her strategy, just to wear down the champion, but both of these women have been wearing each other down for most of this matchup. Now look at this, Elizabeth able to fight her way free once again, the shot's coming in. Oh, look, oh, taunting right now is not exactly the wisest thing to do, but it looks like these two are trading forearms right now. Big Itaguri from the champion. Now look at this, oh wait, Elizabeth on the middle rope with the splash. Looking to go on the middle rope again, and there's another one. Double stomp. And drop kick right to the head. Now look at this, picking up Eliza. What is she looking to do now? Off the ropes. Oh, shoulder tackle. Oh, now she's laughing. Again, the last time you laughed in the face of Eliza, she went all in with the strikes. And now, oh wait, hang on, got a caught. Air raid neck breaker again. One, two, no. And that, that one taunt almost cost Elizabeth the Women's Intercontinental Championship right there. And now, oh wait, look at that, off the ropes, oh, the back body drop. Now, wait, hang on, turns her around, perhaps, oh wait, look at this, triangle. Triangle locked in. And again, it's the submission prowess of Eliza that is going to be the, the factor here. The, the, the game changer, if you would, in this matchup. Oh, but now look at this. Elizabeth, look at the strength. Oh, power bomb. And I feel like she might have leaned towards that taped up shoulder just a little bit there. Oh, now look at this. The kick's coming in. And now, oh wait, oh, going to work on the arm. Again, just that injured arm of Eliza Stone. And now look at this, Elizabeth really knowing what she needs to do in this matchup. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, the knee right to the arm again. Drop kick to the head. And if you've noticed, Elizabeth, that there's come a point where she has decided not to leave the cage. Big knockout kick. And now could be looking for the end. Look at this. The kick's just coming in. Going into the cover now. But Eliza able to pop the shoulder up. And I believe that's her good shoulder. Now, what on earth is Elizabeth looking to do? Has her in the corner. Up on the top. What are we about to see here? Oh, wait, hold on. Oh, DDT from the top, and this could be it. One, two, no. But Elizabeth has been in control for. 
quite a bit of this matchup at this point. Oh wait, but Eliza back up to her feet. Look at this. Big knee strike. And now once again has the triangle locked in. Triangle locked in here. And the champion could be in trouble. Oh wait, let's go. I think Eliza perhaps looking for something a bit more here. Oh wait, lock, goes for it, locks it in, cross face. Cross, and she wrenches back on it. Cross face wrenching back as well. The champion is in trouble here. Elizabeth could have no choice but to tap out right now. As Eliza has that thing wrenched in. And this could very well be it for the champion right now. Eliza knows what she's doing. She's going to refuse to let go of that hold. So Elizabeth needs to either find a way free. Or she's going to lose this championship right now. Oh, she rolls through. Kick to the gut. And now, oh wait, hold on, turns her around. Wait, wait a second. Oh, the crossroads. Still don't know what her, what she calls that. One, two, but Eliza kicks out. But now look at this, Elizabeth not happy with that, just stomping away on the head. And now, wait, hold on, turns her around, wait. Elizabeth once again going for this submission hold. Turns her around as well. And now look at this. The wrenching on it as well. Trying to rip the arms out of the socket. Trying to take the oxygen out of Eliza here. And now look at this. Elizabeth, look at that. Just refusing to let go. Similar to Eliza. That's the thing, that, you know, central to ring as well. Nowhere to go here. And it's rare that we see Eliza in a position where she can't get out of a submission hold. And it's rare that we see her in a position where she could potentially tap out here. And look at this, Elizabeth just refusing to let go, just wrenching on it. My God, look, how long has she been in this submission hold for? Eliza, you're gonna permanently injure your shoulder here at this point. And she has to tap. And Elizabeth Payne retains the Women's Intercontinental Championship. But my God, did it take a lot for Eliza to give up. And again, I've, I've never, I don't think I've seen Eliza in a position where she was forced to tap out like that. That's the crazy thing about that. But what a matchup we just witnessed there. But in the end. Elizabeth able to retain and the rain continues But what the, the question is what is next for Elizabeth? Oh, oh wait hang on a minute Hang on a minute don't don't do this Elizabeth clearly not done here with Eliza Stone still chair in hand. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. That's the that's Alice Redson. Something tells me these two are not finished. They have unfinished business. And Alice just made the save for Eliza as we are gonna move on with the show here. Well, I didn't expect Alice Redson to come back here tonight. So something tells me. I said what's next for Elizabeth Payne. I think we now know what's next. But I'll tell you what's next for Fight Forever. It's Rascon Rules. As making his way down to the ring first. It is the challenger. It is Jinku. And this man has made it his mission. 
since off, but since off the Kingdom of Glory, he he put everybody on blast. He said anything that keeps him away from Darius is gonna get put down. And hey, he proved that. He beat Joshua Walker to become the number one contender, and now he is looking to take out Darius. But here's the kicker, right? And th this is something I never thought I would say because of the of the legacy of the Intercontinental Championship. Um, making his way down to the ring, it is the champion. It is the hardcore Intercontinental Champion, Darius Rascon. But the thing is, is that this man has not defended the belt once. And he is the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion. I don't know how management have let this slide for this long. But he has beaten the record set by Trent X. And it, I, I'll just say it, it sickens me. Because Trent was a fighting champion. He fought on episodes of Retro. He fought on pay-per-views. He fought in other companies. And Darius has been sat there just waiting for a moment like this for this pay-per-view when he could have been out there defending the belt. Like, I know I shouldn't be getting this heated, but what, what, what has Darius done to be the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion? He's just walked around with the belt. But like, I, I, right, look, okay. So he cashed in on both champions. He became the double champion. And I'm not denying that Darius is a good wrestler. You're going to see that here tonight. But it sickens me that he has just been sat doing nothing. When he could have been defending the belt and building a legacy. That's the thing that annoys me about Darius. Is he knows that he could build a legacy for himself. And has chosen not to do it until tonight. And Jinku is fired up. This man has been wrestling. This man has got, I, I think in recent times, has way more in ring, um, just like in ring time than Darius. But maybe that, maybe this is all Darius' strategy. Maybe he wants to be the champion that defends rarely. I don't know, okay? Maybe Darius is playing us all like fiddles and him not wrestling a lot and then doing a match where he could, in theory, be wrestling for 30 minutes. Maybe this is his plan. Maybe this is what he wants to be doing. I don't know. But anyway, Rascon rules. Let me go through the rules real quickly at the beginning. It is three 10-minute rounds. And oh my god, Darius! Out of the gate. One, two. Oh my god. Terrius almost getting the championship right there and then. And now look at this. Just going to work here on Jinku. But as I was saying, it is three 10-minute rounds. And in those rounds, you can win by pinfall, submission, or countout. If you win by one of those three methods, you will get one full and you need two falls in three rounds to guarantee yourself to walk out as the champion. But here's the kicker. If either man gets themselves disqualified, oh, they will lose the match. And if Darius gets himself disqualified, he will lose the Hardcore Intercontinental Championship. And look at this. Jinku playing it smart in the early stages of this matchup. Going in for submissions. Trying to wear down his opponent. And now, oh, look at this. Darius reciprocating with a submission hold of his own. Little figure four action. Little figure four action here as Jinku struggling. Oh, but now look at this. Here comes the turnover. And that is the downside to locking in a figure four. Is the damage it not only does to your opponent, but if they can turn it over, the damage it will do to you. Now look at this, Jinku, oh, top of the hip toss. And now once again, look at this, Darius now going into the submissions. Just trying to wear down Jinku, and honestly, th this first round 
It's going to be very interesting because we saw how Kenito did it. But again, Darius considers himself the, the pioneer, you know, the, the founding, the, the, the founder of Raston Rules. And therefore, surely, he's going to have a strategy that can surpass anybody. Big uppercut there on the part of Jinku. And now what's he looking for? Oh, look at that. There's a knee. There's a kick. There's an elbow. Pushes him away. Meteora. And Jinku is in control here. And we have only been going for a couple minutes. But here's the thing. This style of wrestling is going to promote these two. And it's going to get these two to wrestle faster. To try and put their opponent away quicker. There's a backstabber on the part of Darius. It is going to try and get these two to just absolutely go to work. And just try and hit their biggest moves out of the gate. But this first round, like I said, is going to be the decider on whether or not they actually go ahead and do that. Oh, big it's a Guri from Darius. And now look at this. We are three minutes down of the ten minutes. We're about a third of the way through this matchup. Well, this matchup, I say this, this round. Oh! And now look at this, Darius. Oh, drops the knee right on the skull there. Now Darius. Oh, backhand. Looking for it. There's the Lariat going into the cover now. One. Two, oh, only a one. Darius hitting it, uh, a big move out of the gate, but, you know, it, it's only been three and a bit minutes. Like, Jinku is still very much, very much fresh. So it's going to be interesting. Like I said, this first round will be very much a momentum decider in this matchup. As, oh my god, the German on the outside. And here's the thing, Darius could look. Oh! Oh, I think his knee might have just smashed the steps there. Big exploder. And both of these men could go for the count out victory in round one. Both of these men really could. And oh! Oh! I think Jinku might have misjudged that shot there. And now both of these men. Oh! Inzaguri missed. And now Jinku, what's he looking to do? Oh, works on the arm. Referee at six. They got to think about getting this back in the ring. Jinku does. And now what is Jinku looking to do? Catches him. Spinning Uranagi into the cover now. One, two. Kick out from Darius. And we are basically halfway through round one. Neither man really with an advantage. Oh, Jinku drops the knee. Oh, and now going to work on the head. Oh, oh, wait. oh, big time jawbreaker on the part of Darius. Might have just been what Darius needs. Big forearm. And again, these guys are just going at 100 miles an hour right now. Once again, look at this. Darius just trying to wear down Jinku. Just trying to wear this man down. No, wait. Hang on. Darius going up top. Where we see this. Elbow drop. And now look at this. Oh, in come the strikes. In come the shots. Oh, the stomp to the gut. Oh, big kick to the head there from Jinku. And now, oh my god. Look at that. Just smashing his head on the mat. Now, oh wait, hold on, hold on. Jinku could be looking to put this away. Hammock DDT to win the first round. One, two, Darius kicks out. And we're getting Fight Forever chance. That right, that's right. This is CW Fight Forever. As Jinku missed a knee, Darius is taunting, not. Quite what you want to be doing. There's a clothesline. Oh, but now look at that. Darius back up to his feet, but gets caught with another one. Darius back up to his feet again. Ducks the clothesline. And now, oh, wait, hold on. Turns him around. Darius. Rask on drop. Could this be it? One, two, no. 
Jinku kicks out. And we are approaching the three minute warning in this matchup. What I say in this matchup, in this round. Like I said, I don't, I don't usually commentate matches with round systems. DDT on the outside. So, you know, it's still a bit of a learning curve for me trying to figure out the terminology. So right now, look at this. Darius just wearing down his opponent on the outside. Just Oh, wait, hang on. But Jinku turns it around. Couple forearms to the champion. Now, hold on. Wait, wait a second. What's he looking for here? Oh, wait. The arm drag. Oh, the clothesline on the outside. Four. Referee at four. Oh, but wait, Jinku, the spinning Uranagi on the outside. Oh, wait, Jinku, looking for that pinfall victory, perhaps. Could be looking to put this round away. Darius in trouble here. Oh, caught with the back there. Caught in the back, and oh, big knee. Turns him around. Could be looking for that Fujiwara. Oh, but look at that, Darius' foot by the ropes. That seems to be the downfall here of Jinku is that Darius was clearly watching him versus Walker and clearly knows what he has to do to get out of that arm bar. And oh wait, oh no, look at that. Inside cradle, one. Oh, only a one. I feel like, oh wait, Jinku back up to his feet, catches him with the roll up. One, two. Oh, Jinku almost went in the first round there. Oh, wait. Oh, Darius might have just cost himself there. Darius took a moment, took a breather. Knee drop from Jinku. Now, oh, wait, hang on. Jinku. Jinku got it locked. Hammerlock DDT. One minute to go. One, two. Jinku gets the first fall. Oh, that is not the result that Darius is going to want here. That is not the result that Darius is going to want. Let's take a look at some of those replays. Darius came out all guns blazing, but so did Jinku. And something tells me that if that first round is anything to go by, I would not expect the other two to go nine minutes like that one just did. I feel like... They have brought their all in that first round, and that might be Darius's detriment here in this matchup as round two underway is now. Look at this old big forearm from Jinku. Kicks him down, and there's a Lariat. Lariat to Darius. One, two. Oh, only a one. Only a one there. Oh, but now look at this. Jinku perhaps looking for a drop kick. Oh, and he hits it. Darius clearly rocked after getting spiked with that DDT. And now, oh wait, hang on, what on earth is Jinku looking to do? Oh wait, gets caught, boot to the skull, there's an Itaguri from Darius. And this is must win for Darius here. He has to try and tie the falls, because if it goes to the third round, he cannot rely on judge scores, which reminds me, if we get to round three, and the score is tied, then it will go to judges. But if it stays the way that it is right now, with Jinku at one and Darius at zero, then Jinku will be the hardcore intercontinental champion if we go for all three rounds. But there's the backhand into the Lariat, going into the cover. One, two, Jinku kicks out. Man, here's the thing. It's so interesting watching a matchup like this because you just you just never know what kind of strategies you're going to see. Some people want to try and end this match as quickly as possible. Some are probably going to wait to try and pick up a fall in the third round. And oh, the knee right to the kidney. And oh, that is going to be good if you're Darius. Oh, but he misses the elbow and that could be bad. On the part of Darius there. We have gone from good to bad. There's the exploder. One, two. But Darius able to kick out. As we are two minutes down 
in round two. And it really is anybody's game right now. Whose game is it? I, I don't know. But now look at this. Darius calling Jinku up to his feet. What is he going to look to do here? Super kick. And oh, I'll wait. But look at that. Jinku back up to his feet. Oh, big knee right to the gut. But oh, hip toss. And now we're going to drop the knee. But Jinku sidesteps. And now look at that. Jinku with the roll up. One. Two. Oh, almost got him. And if Jinku got that full... He would have been the hardcore intercontinental champion. But Darius might have just goaded. You know, I think he might have just goaded Jinku. But I don't think he did it in the way he wanted to because Jinku is now back in control and he's looking to hit a fisherman buster. One, two. Darius able to kick out though. And Darius has really been on the back foot here in the second round. He really has. Oh. Like super kick though. And I don't know if it's Darius trying to conserve his energy or what. But oh the boot to the, the super kicks. I don't know if it's Darius trying to conserve energy. Or if, it, or if it's he's trying to come up with a strategy on the fly. But Darius really needs to get a full here. Oh, big time double axe handle. And now, oh wait, look at this. Oh, the knee right to the skull. Now Darius, what's he looking to do? Oh, backhand once again, looking for that lariat. And he connects. He hits it. One, two. Jinku kicks out. And what is it going to take? For one of these men to get the full here because... Oh, wait, hang on. I think Jinku might be bleeding now. Both men. Something we didn't notice is that Darius was bleeding at the end of the first round. But now look at this. Rascon drop to Jinku after he's busted open. One, two. Darius secures himself the second round. And it is now sudden death. Whoever gets the next fall will be the Hardcore Intercontinental Champion. However, if, if we go to a time limit draw, it will go to judges. I'm going to take a quick little drink here whilst the replays play. What a matchup this has been so far. Oh my lord. <clears throat> As Darius able to, uh, to at least make it even. But we are now going into round three. And it's going to be interesting to see what these two men do. Big time Exploder and Jinku already trying to go for the win here. One, two, no. As now what? Jinku, oh wait. Jinku, spinning Uranagi. One, two, Darius kicks out. Somehow, someway, Darius still has fight left in him. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, Jinku went for that clothesline, but Darius countered it. And was able to hit a German. I don't know, I, if, if I was Darius, I, I would just try going for a Rascon drop. I would try putting this matchup away right now. But he misses the knee. And this could be detrimental. Jinku has him in the corner now. Lifts him up. Oh, but now look at this. Hold on. Darius pushes him away. Oh, no. Wait. Kick. Oh, the gut buster. The, the double knee face breaker into the cover now. One. Two. Darius able to pop a shoulder up. And this is where the fatigue is going to start to set in. These two men have gone all in. For basically at this point about 15 minutes oh now look at this the roll up one two no oh double axe handle there from Darius Darius is getting more and more desperate as the minutes tick on because it oh my god 
Jinku back up to his feet off of the super kick. But the second one takes him down. Oh, but now look at this. Jinku back in it. Oh, went for that. that oh, he gets caught the super kick. He went for a chop. Darius blocked it there. And now, oh, wait, look at that. Darius, we're going to put this away with the Lariat going into the cover now to retain the championship. One, two, no. Darius is getting desperate. And I think in a way Jinku is too, but Jinku looking kind of more calm under the surface here. Oh, wait, Darius. Darius with the, oh, the avalanche arm drag. Avalanche arm drag. Oh, wait, look at that. Oh, big forearm there from Jinku. Oh, went for the close line again. Gets caught the German. And my goodness, what a matchup these two have been having. Oh, but wait, hang on. Darius. Darius. Rascon drop. Oh, wait, but he's not done. Could, if, if he hits this. If he hits this. Got him hoisted up on the shoulders. Rascon drop. One, two, Darius retains. And this is why I'm annoyed that Darius doesn't wrestle all that much right now. If he was having matches like this consistently and then beat Trent's record, maybe I would be a little bit more happy about it. But this is his first offense. Hey, both of these men giving us a very, very exciting Rascon rules match right there. And so I, I, I want to, I want to see this stipulation continue. I'm going to tell you that right now. I want to see this continue because my goodness, what a matchup that was. Jinku and Darius out there showing the world what these well hey what these championships were all about darius of course cleaning some of the blood off of him but looks like he might have suffered an injury to his nose there but we will move on with the show oh wait hang on what's what's happening oh no we won't here come price and trevor stevens here come the british rebellion Time's a ticking. It's finally time. Are you guys gonna actually show up? Or... Oh, oh, here we go. What's done in the dark will come to light. What? What, what? what does that mean? Oh, well, there's one of them. Price is going after him here. And look at this, the fight's on. This isn't this isn't a match or anything. This, this, this is just you know, Price called these guys out for a fight. Oh, here comes the big man. Trevor saw it coming though. Oh, but gets caught with a big shot there. Who are these guys? That's, that's the my question. Is who are they? Right now, it looks like the British Rebellion might have bit off more than they can chew early on. Oh, but now look at that. Sidesteps the knee. And now Trevor, look at Trevor go. Pele kick. Into the elbow. And we have ourselves a brawl. We have ourselves a bit of a scrap here. Big time flip. Monkey flip on the part of Trevor there. And now Price fighting back against this other masked guy. I still... I have no idea who these guys are. Oh, big time drop kick to the head there. But it feels like the more damage they do to them, this I think it's the first time someone has actually took the fight to them. The more damage that's done to them. Oh, wait, hang on. Bryce really just want to throw... What? Oh, and he throws him off finally. Wait, wait, Bryce, Bryce. Oh my God, the frog splash off the ramp. This is going crazy right now. As the mask guys, you know, I, I said the British Rebellion might have been biting off more than they can chew. It feels like it's an even fight right here. Oh, the shot to the gut. Oh, wait, hang on, but Trevor refusing to stay down. Look, there's a forearm. There's another one. 
Trevor showing he, he, he's got the strap inside of him. Oh, but gets caught the clothesline. Now look at this. Shots being thrown here. Now look at this. Oh. It, it's just a brawl. Al Davis is here because, well, he, you know, it, it's Al Davis. We were meant to have the next match. But it looks like instead we're getting this at the moment. Oh, the strength. And this mask guy is as Price and this other one have, have gone all the way down here. Near the fans. Because right now, it seems as though the tide is being shifted here between oh big boot and now oh, wait hang on oh no there's a sledgehammer involved oh trevor saw it coming though big spit well wheel kick there oh wheel kick action and, oh here comes the sledgehammer trevor's had enough and i don't blame him oh but there's a drop toe hold there now look at this, these two are just scrapping. Oh, throws him into the apron. Now what is Trevor looking to do right now? I have no idea. Oh wait, Trevor. Trevor, gun wrench power bomb. And now, oh wait, hold on. Suplex pile driver. I don't know what happened with the feed there. They teleported for a split second. Now look at this, Trevor. Oh, but wait, hold on. Oh, the super kick. And oh, wait, hold on. No, 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 not on concrete. Don't do anything crazy. Oh, I, 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 don't, I don't even know who these guys are. They can do anything here. Oh, my God. The dude buster. And Trevor is still celebrating in the ring. He thinks this is all over. He thinks this is over. But little does Trevor know. Oh, there's the sledgehammer. Who are they? That's my question. Who are these people? Why have they been attacking the tag division? How is Trevor still fighting is the real question as well here. Oh, big shot. Now I went for the chop. Oh, but there's a forearm. Kick to the gut. And, oh wait, hold on, oh, takedown. And there's the sledgehammer coming in again, oh, right to the head. Trevor holding his arm, he is trying his damnedest to stay alive. You can only take so much of this. Oh my god, Trevor is still just trying to fight, man. Oh, drop toe hold. Sledgehammer took it out of the equation. Big time elbow. Oh wait, hold on. Kick to the gut. And now what is this man? Oh wait, hold on. Hold on. Oh, the power bomb. Wait, hold on a second. I wait, and now the big man. Oh wait, wait a second. Assisted burning hammer, hold on a minute. Oh, they're taking the masks off. Wait, no, what? Razoranye? What the hell are they doing here? It's been Razoranye this entire time. What the hell? Well, after that, I have a lot of questions, but um, we are going to move on to, I, I, I don't like using the term co-main events, but at this point, with the stakes in each, it, it's worth saying that both of these two matches could be a main event. As making our way down to the ring first, it is the challenger for the Women's World Championship. It is Tony Taylor now. We've seen it with the Unholy Alliance. Violent Regime and Control Atav. Alexis Nova couldn't get the job done. Christine has. And honestly, with what happened on the last episode of Mayhem, 
I genuinely think that this uh, this could very well be the night of the violent regime. I, I don't know. As we now await the entrance of the champion, I'm going to take a quick drink. This show is killing my throat, but you know what? It's fine. What a show this has been so far. And oh, wait a second. Mayu, a couple of things here. So she's going back to the, the, the red hair, the red streak. She has a sword. A sword. Mayu is coming out here and it's obvious she's ready for a fight here tonight as the women's world champion makes her way down to the ring. Ever since Mayhem Episode 1, the violent regime and control of Tav have made it their mission to go after Mayu. And it's obvious that they want the Women's World Championship. You know, they um, threw out the match between her and Sienna, which has led Sienna to go on her own path, to go on her own tear through Controller Tav. But now, Mayu is looking to go after the violent regime. Of course, the ones that keep constantly saying that they're the ones that drove the wedge between her and Sky. But Mayu looking ready here tonight. And I mean, you have to be. With everything that's been going on within the women's division. You've got to think after the ambush on Mayhem Episode 8. You, you would think that this... Uh, that this is going to be a very, very heated affair. As Tony Taylor looks to uh, capture her second women's championship here within CEW. Of course, the first ever women's champion all the way back in 2018 in our first year. And of course, Mayu being the champion in our fifth year. You know, without even thinking about it, you know, because that's not even what this is about, but... This is a battle between CEW's history and, it, and its present. And Tony wants to be the present as well as the history. But this is going to be one hell of a matchup. You can tell that the tensions are riding high here in this matchup. Here we go. And oh, look at that. Already misses the forearm. And oh, there's a kick. Out of the gate. Wait, Tony. Kamagoye out of the gate. One, two. Mayu able to kick out. Now look at that. Oh, slamming her head into the mat. Tony Taylor with the game plan. She knows exactly what she has to do in this matchup. And now look at this. Just immediately going to work on Mayu. Just driving the knees into the skull. And that's the thing, I didn't expect anything less from Tony, you know, ever since she's been a part of the violent regime. Starting in, I believe, oh, my sent on. I believe, I want to say. Oh, when? It's been a while since Tony has been a part of the violent regime. And going to work on the knee of Mayu. Here's the thing, again, Mayu, no longer sporting that knee brace. But the damage surely has to be there whenever someone goes after the leg. Oh, and now look at this. Mayu with the Rana. But ever since Tony has been a part of the violent regime, it feels as though, you know, she has just been more aggressive. She's planned things out more. You know, she's been dubbed the violent genius. And now, wait, what is Mayu looking for? The cross body to the outside. These two are wasting no time, just absolutely going to work. 
against each other right now. That's now look at this, Mayu bringing it back into the ring. I mean, Mayu doesn't need to do that, but she's going to anyway. Going for the cover now. One. Oh, only a one. It's going to be very interesting to see what goes on in this matchup. Of course, we haven't seen Christina Dean at all today, which is never a good sign if you're Mayu. It's now look at this. Oh, whoa, went for the German. Tony got out of that one into the elbow. Right to the skull. And now I'll oh, look at this. Tony knowing her enemy well, going after the leg. Now I'll oh, wait, hang on once again, perhaps continuing to do damage to the leg here. And now I'll oh, wait. Hold on, ankle lock. Ankle lock applied here. Mayu just a little bit too far away from those ropes. And Tony has that base. She's put, basically, she, she's made it so that Mayu cannot crawl. Oh, but now look at that Mayu able to find her way free. Big boot to the skull there. And oh, went for the double axe handle. Couldn't quite get it. And now gets caught. Shots to the back. Now look at this. These two having a little bit of a fight here. And I feel like it's similar to what I said about the first two matches as a spear. Don't really expect a match. Expect a fight between these two. And now look at this. Mayu going to work on the arm. And oh wait, hang on a minute. Instead of letting go, she's locked in an arm bar. And now look at this. Just wrenching back on it. Trying to wear down the arm of Tony Taylor. And Tony is very much struggling here. But it's still the early stages. So I'm not sure if an arm bar is going to be enough. As look at this. Tony now bringing the fight. But it's going to wear her down to the point. Oh, there's the takedown. To where, you know, if Mayu can just keep that up for most of this matchup, you know, it, it, it could be very bad for Tony Taylor. But it'll be interesting to see what happens as now I'll wait. Tony with the snap suplex going into the cover. But Mayu's foot under the rope there. And Tony not happy with that call at all here. And oh, the kick to the back. And now look at this. Head scissors applied and all oh, the elbow right to the skull. And now, oh wait, Tony with the takedown rolls over. And now, oh wait, she looking for those knees once again. Oh no, Mayu saw it coming. Big shot there from Mayu. And now look at this, the kick's flying in. Oh wait, trying to catch her, slipping with the stomp, but she can't quite do it. Oh wait, got it that time, into the German. Knee right to the back as well. And so far it has been pretty even between champion and challenger. So now what is Mayu looking at? Oh, doesn't matter, gets caught the forearm. And oh, clothesline on the part of Tony Taylor. And now what's Tony looking to do into the corner? Oh, big time shoulder tackle. And now Tony off the ropes, running knee. Goes into the cover here. One, two, Mayu able to kick out. And right now, Tony Taylor, oh, with the splash. Doesn't quite get the full contact, but gets enough to do damage. Now, once again, working on the leg, and it seems to be advantage Tony Taylor at this moment. I think that running knee might have been very, very detrimental to the champion right here. He's continuing to work on the legs, on the hamstrings. Oh, but now look at that. Oh, Mayu, big kick right to the chest. And now, Mayu... Got that lifted up. Could be thinking Alabama slam. And it connects. And now look at this. It's Mayu's turn to go after the leg. And look at this. It's the shots to the knee. Oh, wait. Now turns her around. Mayu. Oh, inverted DDT. 
Now look at this, head scissors, oh look at this, the elbow's right to the head. Now what is Mayu looking for, the shot's flying in. Jawbreaker. And now look at this, the shot's coming in once again, Tony in trouble. Look at this, Mayu, Mayu just bringing the fight right now. Throwing her onto, uh, onto the apron. And the drop kick to the outside. Mayu in control here and oh, misses the senton. Now look at this. Tony looking for something. But Mayu not, not gonna let that happen. Oh, sweeps the legs. And on the outside nonetheless. Oh wait, big kick there from Mayu. Neither woman really gaining an advantage right now, but Mayu with the spear on the outside. Al Davis telling them, get back into the ring. But neither one of them wants to do that right now. Oh, Senton misses again. Stomp to the head. Now bringing it back into the ring, but I think it might be only to break the count here. Yep. Tony wants to do more damage on the outside, it seems. Spine Buster on the outside. Now just once again doing a work on the knee. Oh, went for, went for a kick there. Gets caught the runner. On the part of Mayu Shigata. And now the suplex on overweight Tony. Sees it coming and now looking for a run. German on the outside. Now what is Tony looking to do here? Perhaps looking maybe to bring it back into the ring. Oh, no, instead just slams her into the apron. And now brings herself back into the ring just to gloat. But now look at that Mayu back in. The shot's being thrown, but now Tony. Oh, Kick to the gun, there's a knee to the ribs. Now what is Tony looking to do? Calls Mayu up to her feet. Oh, there's the boot. Big boot coming in and this could be it for the women's champion. One, two, Mayu having a kick out. And now, oh wait, hang on, Tony. Taking too much time to taunt. She might have been thinking black magic, but Mayu getting back up to her feet. And that might have been a mistake. There's a forearm. Now look at this. Oh, went for the double stomp. Oh, the sweep into the legs. Oh, look at that. Tony might have been thinking black magic again, but Mayu realizing she has to get up quickly when Tony goes to that corner, because otherwise this might happen. And this could be the end of the Women's World Champion. And the run. Black Magic. Going into the cover here. One, two, Mayu kicks out. Tony can't believe it. We're getting a we're not worthy chant. As Mayu proving that she still has fight. This match is not over by a long shot. Oh my god. What a hip toss there. And now Mayu continuing to bring the fight. I feel like she might have hit her second wing here. Now in the corner. Probably not looking for the honorable soul. But instead looking for something. There's a double axe handle. Oh but now look at that. Tony back up to her feet. And another hip toss coming in. And the drop kick again. Mayu hitting that second wind. Wearing down the challenger. Look at this. Oh wait, hold on. Oh, there's a takedown. And now into the armbar again. Just trying to wear down Tony in this matchup. Wrenching back on it. Wrenching back on that arm. And this is what I mean by uh, Mayu going after that arm is going to be very beneficial in the later stages of this matchup as Tony is struggling here. 
Have a look at that. Tony Taylor once again finding a way free. But how must Tony Taylor be feeling knowing that she's hit her big shots on Mayu and can't put the match up away yet going after the knee again. Now once again locking in that ankle lock. Both of these women looking for submissions, looking to wear down their opponent. Mayu is struggling here. The damage being done to the legs throughout the matchup. Definitely playing a factor in this ankle lock right now. Oh, but now look at this. Mayu finds the way free. Big shot once again. And now Mayu. Oh! Went for an honorable so out of nowhere. But couldn't quite connect. And there's the leg sweep. Now once again. Tony just going to work on the legs. And I feel like. With the legs buckling right there off of the, the attempted honorable soul. I feel like that might be a big issue here. But honorable soul goes into the cover now. One, two, Tony kicks out. And it's rare that we see someone kick out. But to be fair, Mayu doesn't often use that point blank version. She typically only uses that in moments of desperation but it didn't pay off this time and now Mayu needs to rethink her strategy here now wait hang on how's Tony on the top rope here could be looking for something big perhaps a superplex perhaps looking to put this match up away oh but wait hang on Tony fights back pushes her off into the splash Going into the cover now. One, two. Mayu able to pop the shoulder up. And now Tony just circling Mayu, trying to figure out what to do. And there's the boot. Are we looking at a new women's world champion? One, two. Mayu kicks out again. And I feel like the desperation is starting to sink in a little bit here for Tony Taylor. As just the shots are being thrown. But Mayu keeping herself cool under the surface. And now I'll wait. Look at this. Northern Lights. One. Two. No. Not enough to keep Tony down. Mayu perhaps looking for another honorable soul or just something in the quick hit. Quick hit connects. One, two. Tony kicks out. Who? It's all going to come down to who wants this more. Oh, there's the spear. Oh boy, hang on. Mayu not done here. Oh, Mayu went for another one, but... Missed it. And now what is Mayu looking for? Oh, no. oh, thrown to the outside. And that could be costly for the women's world champion right here. Big shot there from Tony. Oh, head first on the outside. Oh, went for the stomp. Gets caught shot there. And now Mayu with the spear on the outside again. Mayu now bringing it back into the ring. Could be looking for the end. Looking to put this away. But, oh, wait, hang on. Oh, there's the spear again. And Mayu not happy. Just trying to keep Tony down. But Tony refusing to stay down here. And, oh, wait, look at that snap, man. Knee to the back. And, oh, wait, hold on. Tony, Tony. To put Mayu away. To complete the goal with the Unholy Alliance. Black magic. And Tony just staring, realizing what she might be about to do here. One, two, Mayu kicks out. Mayu somehow still has fight left in her. And look at this, continuing to go after the arm. Oh, big time basement drop kick. 
but Tony refusing to stay down, knowing that if she stays down for too long, she will get caught by that honorable soul, and that could very well spell the end of her chances of becoming Women's World Champion. Now look at this, into the corner, there's a shoulder tackle. And the big shot with a double axe handle. Now what is Mayu looking to do? Has Tony in the corner perhaps looking for that superplex once again? Looking to hit it this time, looking to get it done. Tony caught superplex. Oh my god, Tony. Into the cover now. One, two. Tony kicks out. My god, what a show this has been. What a match these two are having. And what is Mayu looking to do now? Going up to the top rope where we see this. Double stomp. Going into the cover now. One, two. Tony able to kick out. Now look at this. Oh, big time neck breaker on the part of Mayu. Now wait, like Mayu looking for it. Tony dazed. Honorable soul. Wait, hang on. Mayu not done. Mayu looking to really put the nail in the coffin here. There's a second one. Wait, what? She's not done. Wait, hold on a minute. Submission hold. Stretch muffler locked in. Mayu just trying to send a message here. Mayu really trying to send a message here to Tony Taylor. As Tony is struggling here. Tony really struggling as Mayu breaks it up. Tony clutching at that knee. And now Mayu looking for the final shot here. Honorable soul. One, two, Mayu retains. And well, hey, we heard it during the contract signing. Mayu said it herself. That she was going to use Tony Taylor as a message to anyone that wants that championship and anyone in that unholy alliance that thinks that it's going to be an easy fight. My, you just proved otherwise. I'm going to take a drink during the replays. But massive win there for my, you brilliant women's world championship match right there. As Mayu retains. And there's that Women's World Championship. Al Davis looking a little bit scared. And honestly, I, I am too. I've not really seen this from Mayu. Wait, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Oh, come on. Oh, to the back. Christina Dean. Lying in wait. Didn't want to ruin Tony's moment, so instead going to wait until Tony couldn't get the job done. And Christina Dean walking away? Why? Why? The Women's World Champion out? Wait, what? What? Who? 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 Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute! Sky Simmons! Sky is back and she's just sent a message to Mayu as we move on. We are now on the main event of the evening and this is going to be a matchup for the ages. This was a matchup that both of these men said was always meant to be about one thing and that was about two of the best fighting and I mean, technically it was, 
it, it, it is about two of the best fighting, but not in the context that they had hoped. And while making his way down to the ring, it is the challenger, it is Max McCarthy, and this man is looking fired up here tonight. He is looking ready for this matchup. His first world championship match since, um, I want to say 2021, I believe. So his first world championship match in two years. But he said it himself. You know, he might have grown up, but the challenge is still no different from when he was fighting Braxton Myers. It's now Stanley Owens, and well, hey, you know Stanley, this man is uh, an absolute monster. Max McCarthy waits the arrival of the world's heavyweight champion himself. In comes the world's heavyweight champion, the walking finisher, Stanley Owens. And this man looks fired up here tonight. It's going to be interesting to see what these two do in this ring. It's going to be interesting to see what they're going to do to each other. And the question is, can Stanley earn the respect of Max back because what Max wants him to do is not hold back so we're gonna see but hey it's Stanley Owens so not holding back is I, I think holding back is not in the vocabulary of the world's heavyweight champion especially when the top prize in this company is on the line something tells me that like I said there is no such thing as holding back in the vocabulary of the world champion. Let's look at this Max McCarthy looking ready, looking fired up here tonight. And Stanley Owens looking the same. These two looking ready for a war. Here we go. And look at this right now. Stanley slowly making moves, telling Max to bring it all. Oh, Max with a slip up there, and that is going to be costly. You cannot be slipping up in a World Championship match. Oh, and he whiffs a chop. Oh, this is not looking good for the challenger early on, but he is bringing the fight right now. And now look at this. What is he looking to do now? Oh, leaps over. Leaping over again into an uppercut. And Max with the elbow early on. I think he's trying to outpace Stanley. And honestly, I don't know how wise that is. Stanley is not exactly your standard big man in the sense that, oh, outpacing him is just going to be a simple task. It's not. And now, look at that. Oh, wait. Oh, kick to the knee. Oh, went for a, a fake out punch. Oh, but there's a, there's a proper punch there. One! Only a one. But Stanley proven that, that those punches can come from literally out of nowhere. And they speaking of these punches, look at this. Oh my god! Max is in trouble early on, but now look at this, all oh, the jawbreaker. And now look at that nice uh, nice arm drag. Oh he, he went for something, couldn't quite get it though. Went for another shot, couldn't get it. Oh, Stanley went for that punch once again. Oh, but he hits a fake out punch this time, Max. And Max be balling. Max do be balling. Now what is Max McCarthy looking to do in the corner? Oh, to the ribs. Now they're just bringing it back in. Oh, but now look at that, Stanley with the shots. There's a, there's a chop. I went for a no one kick to the gut there from Max. And oh, there's a knee from Max McCarthy going into the cover now. One. Oh, only a one. And now, oh, wait. Oh, Max went for a knee drop. And now, Stanley, what's he looking to do? Oh, wait, Stanley. Oh, with the German. 
Stanley Owens with the strength and just the power advantage here. Oh, big knee in the corner. Now look at this, Stanley wasting no time looking for a running knee over, gets caught in the gut by Max. Who now look at this, goes in with the inside cradle. One, only a one. But Max now on, on, the, uh, on the upper foot here. And now could be looking for an Inzaguri. Now look at this, Max McCarthy going after the knee of Stanley. Which, you know, we saw was almost a detriment of Stanley against Ben Jenkins. Because he went for that knee drop and it, it just didn't work. And now look at this. Oh! Going in with the, with, the, with the lion tamer there. Rolled out though. Stanley not going to allow that to be sunk in for too, too long there. Now look at this pump handle. And oh! Pump handle. Suplex type deal there. And now, oh no, here comes Stanley. Stanley with those forearms. We know what he's capable of. We know what he does. Oh, went, oh, once again going after the knee, but there's a knee from Max. Now, wait, Max. Oh, with the sent on. Now, Max just stalking him with the elbow. Elbow drop again. And so far, it has been pretty even, but... Max had to throw, I feel like Max had to throw a lot more shots at Stanley's way to make it happen. Oh now, oh look at that big kick. Oh there's an uppercut. Oh there's a jab. Oh chop. Jab. Chop. I don't think you want to be having a strike off with Stanley because look at this. Oh and now look at this. Oh to the knee. There's the dragon screw. Stanley just proving that he can do everything. Oh, wait, but Max up to his feet. Oh, but he whiffs it again. Oh, now look at the kicks from Stanley. He's trying to cave the man's skull in with those. And now, oh, wait. Stanley looking for that pump handle once again. And just a strength on display from this man is insane. As look at this from Stanley. Dead lift. Gorilla Press. And now I'll wait. Stanley once again going for the knee. Stanley going to work here. Submission hold locked in. And Max in trouble. But Max needs to find a way out of this if he wants to stay alive. Big shot there from Max. And oh wait, arm drag. And catches him flush with the knee. Max really going in with those knee strikes. Oh wait, hang on. Oh, the strength for the atomic drop. Max showcasing a bit of his strength here as well. Oh, to the ribs once again. Now Max. Trying to disorient Stanley, but Stanley isn't going to fall for it. Big shot there, though, from Max McCarthy. He now brings it back into the ring with a drop kick. Into the elbow. And a kick to the back. And now what's Max looking to do? Oh, that's the takedown. Max trying to wrestle Stanley here. Wait, hang on, Max once again looking for that Inzaguri. Al Davis almost caught the crossfire. Got to be more careful, Al. These two are crazy. Oh, look at that. Shots thrown to Stanley, and now the drop kick sends him into the ropes. Now, look at this. Max is trying to wear down Stanley, and honestly, it seems to be working here. Max McCarthy showcasing what he's capable of. Flat liner going into the cover here. One, two, only a two. And an early two at that. We get up both these guys chant early on. Big jab. 
And Stanley just bringing the fight once again. Lifts him up. Oh, wait, hold on a minute, Stanley. Stanley, burning hammer. Tells Max to stay down. But he's not going to put this match up away yet. Running power slam. One, two. Max able to kick out. But what damage has been done to Max there? Didn't expect Stanley to just randomly whip out a burning hammer like that. But there he goes. And Stanley once again going in with the strikes here. The forearms coming into play here. Because I feel like Max will get so much going. But then... Oh, wait. Oh! Combination from Stanley in the speed of that. Like I said, you can't try and outpace Stanley. Because this man is actually kind of a freak of nature in the sense of... He can move very fast for a guy like him. Oh, look at that. He blocks the kick. Oh, there's the... Oh, there's the combination again. Max getting caught with it twice. Oh, spin kick. Now, what on earth is Max looking for? Oh, wait. Springboard. Tornado DDT. And now... Oh, the cross body to the small of the back. Smashes his head into the mat. And Stanley. Stanley drawing first blood here. Stanley do be bleeding. And now look at that. That's the chop from Max Ball. But Stanley, he's a freak. He doesn't care. Look at this. Sends him into the corner. And now Stanley with the speed, with the strength and ever punch. Right to the skull. Now Stanley. Not done. There's a clothesline. There's another one. And Stanley just going crazy with him. Going into the cover now. One. Two. Kick out from Max. That's right now. Oh wait. Stanley once again. Just going in. He is going in hard with the strikes tonight. He is going in. And it looks like perhaps one of those strikes might have busted Max open. Oh my god, I'm seeing it. On the corner of his head. Oh wait, Max once again. Drop kick. There's another one. Now Max, perhaps they're going to take it to the skies. Frog splash, but the knees are up from Stanley. Now into the corner again. Oh, wait, Stanley, look at this. Here comes the shots. And now here comes the bill. Oh! Stanley telling this man to stay down. And this could be all she wrote if Stanley can get this. Rolls through. Schoolboy power bomb. One, two. Max kicks out. Oh, wait, hang on. Stanley. Stanley trying to open the wound. Stanley. Stanley going a bit crazy here. Trying to open the wound. Oh, my God. Oh, wait, but Max back up to his feet. He's telling Stanley to bring it. Dragon screw. And now Max. Big chops. Flying in. Max trying to send him into that corner. I don't know. What is Max looking to do now? Has him on the ropes. Close lines him over. And now perhaps it's time for Stanley to take a trip into Max's world here. Max. There's the dive. Oh, wait, hang on. He's bringing it back into the ring. Max McCarthy not done here. Max not done. Hits it again. Oh wait, hold on, wait, Max. Taunting this time. Oh, wait, is he done? Oh wait, he's going up top. He's going up top. 
Max. What's he looking for? Oh, went for the double axe handle, but got caught with the shot. Stanley Owens now. Oh my God, look at that. Look at the strength for this man. Just ripped him out of the air. Oh, wait, wait for a shot. Max able to get out of the way. Shots being thrown, drop, kick. Oh, landing onto the barricade. And these two scrapping on the outside here. Oh, went for the fake out. Now what is Stanley looking for? Lifts up, Max. Now wait, Max, wait. Oh my God, the lawn dart. Into the steel post. Now Stanley, oh my God. Just ran it in full speed. Oh, now throwing him into the barricade. Stanley showing off some aggression here. Maximum knee strike from Stanley. Are the mind games beginning here? Oh, wait, hang on. Stanley, Stanley, Stanley. Stanley, this is a match. Stanley. Stanley, this is a match. This... This is a fight. You've got to bring it back into the... Oh, he went for the one punch. Oh, a little shot there from Max. Who needs to get himself back into this. Oh, wait. Hang on, Max. Oh, Max with a knee strike. Max realizes the situation now. Davis telling him to get Stanley back into the ring. Max brings him back in. And now... Oh, wait. Hang on. Stanley, oh my god, is Stanley okay? Is Max taking a second here, realizing Saint might be wrong with Stanley. He's slowly getting back up to his feet. He might have been knocked a little loopy with that knee strike, but Stanley, look at this. Still fighting nonetheless. Dragon screw once again going for the leg. And now this could all be over. Could be looking for the schoolboy power. Oh, no way, there's the one punch. Stanley, a moment of hesitation. One, two, Max just pops the shoulder up. How much more can Max take? Look at this, Stanley. Stanley is entering a zone that I have not seen from this man in a long time. Oh wait, hang on, Stanley, Stanley. Stanley's making a mistake here by going to the top. Oh, and he crashes and burns. Max now. Oh, wait. Look at the strength. Unbreakable flow. One, two. Stanley just kicks out. But oh my God, the blood on the face of Max. As he looks for another unbreakable flow to put the match away, but Stanley just pushes him away. There's a knee right to the skull. And now look at this, Stanley just tapping into a side of him that I don't think we've seen in a long time. Doing what he needs to do to walk out with the world's championship and oh my God, the chop. Now this time, Stanley looking to make that knee connect, and oh my god, it does. Now Stanley, on the top. Oh, he misses the knee again. And now inside Cradle. This could be Max's moment, one, two, no. Max almost becoming champion right there on a blunder on Stanley's part. But wasn't able to make it happen. And now look at this. Max going after the arm. Max just doing whatever he has to do. Big shot there to Stanley. Oh my god, but Stanley back up to his feet. And now look at this. From Max. Combination. Clothesline coming in. Max refusing to stay down. Refusing to say die. Turns him around. Now look at that big shot. There's the shot, and now wait, hang on, Irish whip into the corner. 
Max, what's he looking to do now? Oh, hang on. Oh, oh! Split legged moonsault going into the cover now. One, two, no. What is it going to take for one of these two men to pick up the win? A big shot there. Oh, there's the knee. Oh, knockout kick. Big time kick there from Stanley. Now look at that, throwing him. Now Stanley bringing him back in the hard way here. The shot to the back of the head. And oh no. Stanley with the knees. Stanley just... Oh my god, he is punishing Max here. I oh, went for the kick on her elbow to the knee. Oh wait! Maximum knee strike! One, two, Stanley just kicks out. Max can't believe it. Throw in. Stanley to the outside. There's a drop kick sending him off the apron. And Max McCarthy looking to dive once again, perhaps. And he dives to the outside. Wait, hang on, Max. Max not done. Wait, Max. No, not on the outside. Max, remember. Oh my god, the knees! Knees are up from Stanley. Maximum knee strike from Stanley. Bringing him back in. And I believe Max McCarthy might have just cost himself the championship for the third, the second time in the match. One, two, Stanley Owens retains the world's heavyweight championship in our main event of the evening oh my god what a matchup max almost got it done but in the end it's called high risk high reward for a reason max went for that maximum impact to move i don't think we've seen in quite some time from this man but in the end Stanley saw it come and wiped him out with the knee. Then the power bomb. And Stanley's reign continues as world's heavyweight champion. This has been Fight Forever. This has been our five year anniversary. I've been commentator Byron. And I will see you all next time.